back there, ready to receive the kick. Savadre will kick off for the Houston Cougars. They have losses to California, to Minnesota, and to UCLA, but they have been in all of those football games. In fact, lost the California game on the road by only four points, led UCLA at the 1.6 to nothing, and trailed only 21 to 14 at the half. Savadre gets his kick away, and Stevens comes up to take it at the 11-yard line. Looking for a little daylight. Finds a little bit, gets across the 25, out to about the 27-yard line before he is knocked down by the Cougars. And it was Percy Foreman who made the stop. Play went for 18 yards by Travis Stevens out of Clarksville, Tennessee. Tennessee's offense, T. Martin at quarterback, Jamal, Sean Bryson, Peerless Price, Jermaine Copeland, and Eric Diagu, the tight end. On the offensive line, it's Clifton, Hamilton, Riley, Coleman, and Rido, a veteran group on the offensive line for the Big Orange. Tennessee comes out with three wideouts on first play, Bob. Let's see if T goes to the air. Stand up, quick pop out on the side, complete. And knock down Peerless Price across the 35-yard line to about the 36-yard line. Taking a look at the defensive front, Patterson Owens, the best of the bunch. Mike DeRosalie and... Also, the linebackers, Jeremy Maxson, is the best of that bunch. You'll be hearing his name perhaps quite often tonight. They use a three-man front, four linebackers, although that's a little misleading, and we'll talk about that as we go along. Hand off in the middle up to the 40-yard line. Goes big Jamal Lewis, and flags are down. I say a little misleading, uh, Tim, because often they walk that linebacker, one of the linebackers up, and make it actually a four-man they, they do that very often with Hampton walking up on the outside, giving them a four-man down look. Offense, Smallish. The were not set up for a full second before the snap. Still second down. All right, you heard Al Ford's call there. Smallish defensive backs, three out of the four, and it'll be interesting to see if Tennessee tries to throw on them with, with taller wide receivers. They have a guy whose name is familiar around Tennessee, although not related to the former ball. His name is Jason Parker also, and he's a true freshman, and they may pick on him at corner. He is in the lineup tonight because of some injuries. Actually, Houston lost four starters out of the UCLA game. Charge timeout. Charge timeout to the Houston Cougars right here. This is something we're seeing a lot of this year. People can't seem to get the pants long enough anymore, and uh, when they do, it's a charge timeout uh, because of equipment violation. Uh, we see some uh, consternation on the part of uh, Coach Helton over this. I tell you what, I believe I've seen that uh, in 50% of the games so far this year. It's, uh, it's something you would think that a college student who's passed his ACT would be able to figure out. You have to have the pants over the knees. Uh, so far, it's worked to Tennessee's benefit because <laughs> Tennessee's equipment managers managed to get that done. Yeah, called against Florida Gators last week. Very true. And called against Syracuse, come to think of it, in the game up there in New York. So it has been, been a little bit of a problem for the opponents of the balls. Looks There's Coach Philip Fulmer, the winningest coach among the active coaches in the game today. And we've still got some discussion going on between Coach Helton and the, and the officials. Apparently it's rather heated down there. There's Phillips' record against Conference USA. Referee is Al Ford, a well-known official in the Southeastern Conference. And finally it's all settled and we're ready to play some football as you get a good panoramic view of the 107,000 or so who are in here tonight to see this game. Tennessee has got a Rough three-game conference situation coming up after this one. Houston's defense jumping around out there a bit. Tennessee with a wing on the right side. T stands up and hits Peerless Price, and they drive him straight back after a short gain. Just the quick hitch on the sideline, trying to get some of that yardage back they lost on the five-yard penalty. Right cornerback William Fields was the first man to make contact with Peerless. That springs up a third down situation now and about two yards to go. And if I were Houston, I would look for Jamal Lewis right here. Key play to see if Tennessee can get off to a good start offensively. Third down conversions on the season. Tennessee 6 of 26. Not that good, especially. Here's the handoff, and the big man drives. Flags fall again. Jamal Lewis on the carry following his left guard and tackle, but 
Again, a flag is dropped on the far side of the field, away from the uh, action here, and perhaps somebody jumped. Maybe we had it. Somebody in the neutral zone. Here's Al. Houston a little over anxious to try to stop that third and short, and uh, Tennessee gets a break and gets a first down out of it. Ball moves downfield. Volunteers now will be first down and 10 to go. With the ball resting at the 41-yard line of Tennessee. A little bit of a slight breeze here tonight. We'd like to see a little bit more of a breeze because it has been a stifling day here in East Tennessee. Here's T. Martin back to throw. Looks downfield, goes to the sideline. Got a man open, and it's Jermaine Copeland. He's out of bounds. Nice touch that time by T. Martin. And I guess Timmy needs a few more of those for confidence. That good protection for him, solid protection on the backside. The kind of skill pass that T. has not thrown very well so far this season, but he throws it over the defender right on the sidelines. Great touch. Great touch should help his confidence. Went for 12, another first down for Tennessee. There's Jermaine Copeland. Martin, three for three. That'll help your confidence. Here's the pitch back to his tailback. Cuts inside. Not much going there. Jamal Lewis could not find much room as he turned up field. The Cougars pretty well smelled that one out. About five or six guys. Take a look here, Tim. You're getting the tough defense in front of Houston, Tennessee, trying to go into the short side, into the boundary, but Houston pursues well, makes the play. Gang tackling. Tennessee may have to throw some more to loosen them up. All right, the balls break out of there, looking at a second and ten right now. Ball in Houston territory. T steps back, gets away. No, he's not going to get away. I thought he would spin out of there for a second, but a nice play by Lewis Hampton, outside linebacker, who drops him for a 12-yard loss. That's the 12th sack 12th by Houston. sack of the, the season for Houston. They had all 20 all of last year. So it's a very aggressive defensive team. Apparently, Coach Helton uh, makes up for aggressiveness where he fails to have size in some cases. He does. They had five down linemen that time, and all were coming hard, two of them obviously being linebackers. Well, here comes one of those big third down plays that Tennessee needs to uh, convert on. This one, though, is third and a mile, about 20 yards for a first down. There's the man, and it's going to be close. The flag is down. I think he has the first down if the play stands. Pass complete to Peerless Price, T. Martin's favorite receiver. I believe you're going to have either defensive interference or holding. Nice protection again. T. has plenty of time. Pocket opens up. Terrific throw right on the money. Peerless slanting in from the sideline. Here is referee Al Ford. We'll see what the call is. Holding against the Houston Cougars. Cornerback held Price before he ever made the break there. Uh, automatic first down for Tennessee if they did not reach it with, with the pass. Apparently they didn't. Holding 10-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage is an automatic first down. They're going to pull it back and step off 10, which actually is... Quite a bit further backfield than they really were with a completed pass, but it is a first down, an automatic first down. Only three and a half minutes into the game, but Martin looks sharper than he's looked all year. He looks very poised tonight so far. Houston brings five men up on the line of scrimmage this time. A couple of linebackers behind them, and here's Jamal Lewis trying to find some daylight in that, and he gets a little bit across the 40 down to about the 39-yard line before Houston knocks him down. counter play and a nice cutback by Jamal over, over off the block on the defensive end. Here you go watch the watch the guard pull. Nice block by Cozy Coleman. Just caves his man off. Jamal cuts back. Nice run. All right, Tennessee now looking at a second down and about 4 yards to go for a first. Here's the pitch. They're trying to sweep and do sweep for the first down. Jamal Lewis turning it upfield and getting beyond the yard marker by a yard and a half or so. Tennessee first down and 10, driving with the football here in the opening minutes of quarter number one. 
Going with a pitch sweep, pulling everybody. Jamal's got too much speed for the pursuit. Cuts back, picks up the first down. Takes about three to bring him down in the open field, Tim. Eighth play of the drive, first down and 10. 10-31 remaining at quarter number one. After this one, Tennessee goes on the road to play Auburn and Georgia, and then Alabama comes in. Tennessee's got a tight end now for the first or second time. Here's T back, hands off in the middle this time to Jamal, and he gets a couple of yards, and that's about it before the Cougars close the door on him. Cougar linebackers are all pretty active out there. Very tough. They're all big. They're all 235 or 40 pounds, and they, they come up into the line of scrimmage. It looks like their game plan really is to try to stop Tennessee's run. They've got four and five men on the line and, and two or three linebackers close every snap. All right, T with the eye backfield. Receiver split on both sides. And he rolls back, looks downfield, goes for it all, and he's got it! Touchdown, Tennessee. Cedric Wilson, 33 yards. Well, that's the first receiver other than Copeland and Price to really come up with a big play this year, Tim, and he came up with a real big one. You see a poised quarterback stand in there, man breaks free, perfect strike right on the money. T. Martin looks like the quarterback that Tennessee fans hope he's going to become and certainly Tennessee has opened the ball game tonight with their mind on business there was worry about a letdown it's not there Scott set the hole puts it down Jeff Hall puts it up and the referee puts his hands up it's good it is a seven to nothing ball game it comes at 933 remaining in the first quarter of play here in Knoxville the volunteers break on top of the Houston Cougars Bob probably the most impressive drive Tennessee's had offensively since the opening drive of the Syracuse game. They so, mixed it up nicely with the run and the pass. They, they had, here you go, another look, nice block. Spencer Riley there, right on the money. He had a receiver running behind the defensive back and he didn't try to make the perfect pass. He just got the ball out there to him on a string. This time he didn't need to set, throw it up high and let him run under it. It was a time to throw a rocket and he did it. Well, T. Martin, you might say, is perfect. Four for four for 58 yards. Cedric so, Wilson's first touchdown, I believe, of the year also. Correct. There you see nine plays, 72 yards. Took a little over five minutes. And big, big play for Cedric Wilson on the receiving end. First drive of over three minutes this year for Tennessee. Now a part of the game that Tennessee's worked very hard on in practice this week, kick coverage. Uh, kickoff coverage has not been what they've wanted. The punt coverage has not been what they've wanted. Coach Fulmer has stressed it. Uh, we're going to get a look and see how it's how they've done, how they've taken to that coach. Yeah, he was very unhappy with their coverage last week. That was about the only thing he was really unhappy with. This one goes into the corner of the end zone and out of the end zone. Jeff Hall can do that. We don't have to worry about it. Tell you it. what, that's what you call placing it in a spot where nobody can do anything with it except the official picking it up. It'll be brought out to the 20 where the Cougars will take over and we'll get our first look at the Tennessee defense, our first look at the offense of the Houston Cougars. And, um, and the noise level picks up considerably when Tennessee's defense comes on the field. The quarterback is Jason McKinley. He's a big kid, six foot three, 222 pounds, a sophomore from Austin, Texas. He had 21 out of 46 for 269 yards and a couple of touchdowns against UCLA. He pitches it back to Sanford, his tailback, and he got a couple of yards before he is knocked down. Kittrick Sanford carrying the ball. Al Wilson was one of the primary tacklers. Here's a look at the offense. McKinley and Sanford, the key men. Williams starting tonight at uh, halfback. Iglesias is their best receiver, and he's a big guy, too. He's six foot three and over 220 pounds. There's the offensive line. Justin Still is one of the key men for them in the offensive line. Here's the cutback, trying to get Tennessee going against the flow, and it didn't work. Al Wilson made the stop. This guy. Defensive front. Sean Ellis, Jeff Coleman, Darwin Walker, and Corey Terry for Tennessee all have performed 
extremely well, as have the linebackers, Westmoreland, Wilson, and Raynock Thompson. In the secondary, Goodrich, Johnson, Fred White, and Dion Grant. We'll see a number of people in that defensive secondary before the night is over. 21% third down conversions this season for Houston. Let's see what they do looking at third and 11. A big one for Houston, a big one for the Tennessee D. McKinley's back. He's got a little time, and he's got his man who dropped it. And he dropped it because he was drilled by Raynock Thompson. Had he caught it, he didn't have the first down anyway. Thompson had good coverage on him, broke out on the ball. I think the quarterback got really slammed here, too. Here is McKinley back looking. Sean Ellis, who's played so very well in the first two ball games, putting the pressure on McKinley then from the outside. He didn't knock the ball down. He didn't sack him, but the quarterback will tend to remember those kind of things. Savidra gets his kick off, and Tennessee's going to let it bounce and uh, going to bounce out of bounds. Back there was Cedric Wilson. Savidra averaging uh, 36 yards on 24 punts. This one uh, a little above his average, 46 yards, as a matter of fact. Got a good bounce on it, kicked out of bounds, and Tennessee had no chance to recover and, and return it. So the balls go back to work after the defense. Very impressive there, Tim, did their job. The run defense was terrific. Again, Al Wilson made the first two hits. He's, he's really adapted to his move to middle linebacker. He looks like what you want a middle linebacker to be. Raynock Thompson may be one of the more underrated linebackers in the South. Doesn't get a lot of publicity outside of Tennessee, but boy, does he come to play every game. Here's T rolling. Is he going to keep it? Yes, last second he pitched it, and not much there. Not enough room once the pitch was made to Jamal Lewis. He was almost out of bounds when he got the pitch. Uh, the timing <laughs> the timing on the option hasn't been the highlight of Tennessee's offense so far. That wasn't the old Oklahoma triple option, was it? <laughs> you, you just don't have good separation here. You've got to make the pitch quicker and give your, your back a little more chance. But Lewis makes five yards out of it anyway. <laughs> Jamal. Bench presses 460 at least. They made him stop after doing that. Here's the big guy in the middle, driving all the way across the field at the Houston 46-yard line. Jamal Lewis for 16 yards right up the middle. Free safety and strong safety. David Williams and Mike James made the stop for the Cougars. Terrific block, and again, you see Cozy Coleman folding around. Two defensive backs with an assist from the referee make the tackle. The offensive line has been terrific in the early going. Uh, Six carries for Jamal for 33 yards, and uh, there you see the figures on him for the year. Jamal Lewis. Tennessee had called timeout here, and I suspect Tennessee will use an awful lot of players, and Houston will if they have that luxury. They do not have the depth that Tennessee has, but Tennessee used 11 defensive linemen last week, Tim, and I think it showed off late in the Florida game. They were pretty fresh unit out there. At least they were still able to blitz and do all the things that uh, made life miserable for the Gators. It's even hotter tonight, so I would look for Tennessee to play. Lots of people. Billy Ratliff is not able to play in that defensive line, but Tennessee uh, uh, fans might want to get a, an extra good look at Fred Weary tonight because he's going to play more in that defensive line rotation. Flor uh, Houston's defense already has been on the field a lot in the early going. Any concern about Tennessee being mentally flat doesn't look to, to uh, have come to fruition. No, I think they look uh, very, very, very sharp. There's uh, Coach Kemp Helton who's having some words with the referee here. That like referee a, can't make any tackles for him. <laughs> kind of like a manager in baseball. He's uh, he's working for that call strike, huh? Here comes T. Martin and the Tennessee Volunteers, the Cougar defense. They pull up five men on the a line of scrimmage once again. Fakes to Jamal and wants to go deep. Got a man down there. Out of bounds. Intended for Peerless Price. Peerless, uh, of course, can make a quarterback on some plays. Tim looked very, very good. I thought the play, the big catch he made against Florida in the end zone was more of a peerless Price play than a T. Martin play, actually. Terrific play, and Price had separation on the cornerback that time, uh, was behind him, but Martin was a little late in delivering the ball. Price is so fast that you've got to just about deliver it on about a three count, or he's going to be out of your range. 
Tennessee got four wide outs this time. T. Martin's going to go in the gun. Balls on top, seven to nothing. Looking for more. Is the pass complete in the flat? Fumble! And I believe Houston has the football. Sean Bryson was the man who fumbled the football, catching it out of the backfield, the fullback. Third turnover this season for Tennessee. Just three. David Williams from free safety made the play. Nice setup. Good throw. Bryson carries the ball in the inside hand instead of outside hand, so he takes the lick on, on the ball, causes the fumble. And Houston right on top of it, so a break for the Cougars, and they take over in this ball game. The score is 7 to nothing in favor of Tennessee. We've got 7.21 to go in the first quarter of play. McKinley, big youngster at quarterback, Conference USA Freshman of the Year last year. Completes his pass out on the flat and up to about the 43-yard line. For the Cougars goes Jerry and James. We've got a little extra activity after the play. It looks like Al Wilson and one of the offensive linemen were doing some shoving, and I'm afraid Al may have shoved second. Flag is down, and here comes the official call. Play was over, first and foul on the defense. 15 yards, catch on to the end, first down. The man who... Hits second usually is the one who gets nailed. They that, seldom ever see the first hit. That appeared to be the case. Got to keep your poise. And it cost them all the way down to the 41 and a half yard line of Tennessee. Houston with the football. Cougars break out of there with seven minutes and counting going. Ball's on top, seven to nothing, but Houston now with a break and in Tennessee territory. Here comes their tailback, and he cuts the corner and gets knocked down around the 36-yard line. Ketrick uh, Sanford carrying for the University of Tennessee. Corey Terry made the stop. Got a counterplay coming where they start right, come back left. Looks like Tennessee may close on it, but Thompson can't quite make the play. Houston picks up five, trying to capitalize on Tennessee's aggressive pursuing defense by running counterplay. They run the old Joe Gibbs Washington counter trap that uh, the Redskins ran so well with John Riggins and a lot of other people. Here they come on a attempted reverse, stumbling and falling down as the ball carrier. Tennessee had it smelled out anyway. There's big Sean Ellis on top of the man split end uh, Spencer. Allie stayed Spencer. At, he stayed at home where he's supposed to be, rushing in his outside rush lane and stayed at home. So when the reverse came, Ellis was there. He's playing very, very well early in the season for Minus Tennessee. Minus eight yards on that play, so that makes it a third down and 13 for Houston. Now here's where Tennessee's defense has given up some pretty big plays third and long this year. Let's see if they can hold here. Here's McKinley in the pocket, firing, complete but it will not be enough for the first down. Complete to uh, James. And the pressure was on McKinley again. Great pressure on McKinley again. The pocket's beginning to collapse around him. Gave him a little love tap there at the end. Goodrich was the stopper on that one. So it brings up a fourth down now and about six yards to go. Well out of field goal range, so... The Houston Cougars will go into punt formation. Saavedra will be back to punt. A part of the field where you might see a fake. They're on Tennessee's 37, and, and if you're going to fake one, this would be a place you might. Tennessee looks like they're going to play for the fake. Saavedra steps into it, gets it up in the air pretty high. This could be downed. Nope, it's going to go out of bounds. And goes out of bounds at about the 17-yard line, right up closer perhaps to the 16-yard line. 21 yards on the punt. He's trying to pooch it up there and get somebody down to down it inside the five or so, but kind of slid off his foot, went out of bounds. There's Fulmer and Al Wilson talking a little bit, I guess. I think we had a little conversation about keeping your poise there, yeah, probably. No more personal fouls. Please. But a, a nice uh, rise to the occasion by Tennessee's defense after a turnover by the offense. Uh, defense comes in and in spite of a 15-yard penalty, shuts down Houston's offense. Aggressive pursuing defense playing very well early we are in the first quarter it's 442 to go Tennessee's on top by a score of seven to nothing Travis Stevens has entered the uh, football game on this warm night at tailback gets the call and a pop in the middle it's almost outside one more step and he would have been rolling 
He's knocked down by the cornerback, William Fields. Terrific hole on the right side of the line. Watch the blocking here. Rito, lead block by the fullback. Almost made the move to break that one. Boy, watch number 52 through the night, folks, on your screen. Cozy Coleman, he is one fine offensive lineman. All across the offensive line, Tennessee doing a good job. But Coleman, 330 pounds. Here's the quick pop to Stevens, and he is pretty close to first down territory before the linebackers close down on him. Nice blocking again in the center of Tennessee's offensive line. Travis is five foot nine, weighs 185 pounds, out of Clarksville, Tennessee. Also was an outstanding track star at Clarksville. There you see the first down situation weighed heavily in Tennessee's favor. All right, T. Martin stands up, pops it out to Peerless. Peerless fakes, goes for the sidelines, can't quite break it away, but it's complete to Peerless Price. And once again, William Fields has been very active at cornerback for Houston, makes the stop. Almost uh, first down, not quite, but a yard shot. Nice job of taking what they give you. Teams making good decisions. They're playing soft on, on the short side of the field on the wide receiver. He's just raising up and doing the quick hitch to him. Not even double teaming Peerless right now. Quick hit to the fullback, and that's Philip Crosby. Fresh fullback in there, and he crosses the 40 to about the 43-yard line. Tennessee has got great depth at fullback. In addition to Sean Bryson, they have Will Bartholomew and Philip Crosby. And you, I think, could feel pretty comfortable with either one of those guys in the lineup, especially blocking for you. Bryson, perhaps the better of the three as far as running is concerned. Tennessee first down and 10 to go. Houston's defense, once again, they jump up there in a five-man front. Going to throw back against the grain. Got a receiver. And they're going to say his knee was down at the 41-yard line. Peerless Price. Knee down. He was off and running for another 10 or 15 yards or more. But the official right on top of it made the call. Tennessee trying that sprint left. See if we can pick it up here in the replay. Sprint left. Throwback. They really had it set up. Not sure Price's knee didn't come off the turf I before think he it caught came that up, ball. Yeah, it came up before he, uh, as he was catching the ball. But the official was behind him and didn't see as well as our camera did. Good call, not quite executed. <laughs> Here's the quick pop in the middle of this time. There is some room, and Travis Stevens is off to the races. Finally run out of bounds at the 30-yard line, maybe inside closer to the... 29, a 30-yard run. This is a dimension, Tim, that uh, Stevens brings a change of pace when you bring him in for Jamal. Great slasher, makes the middle linebacker miss him right here. Boom. Big move. This guy's got great moves, and we uh, maybe got away with a little hole there in the secondary, Tennessee did. Uh, but uh, Stevens is showing you some, some slashing ability. Three times for 41 yards already. They haven't had a chance to use him in the two games previous to any extent. Here he is He's trying, trying to run with power behind uh, the left guard and the uh, center over there. He's got some power. He's uh, deceptively strong, 185 pounds, but real big thighs. Great numbers in Clarksville in his junior year in high school. Hurt most of his senior year, but Tennessee was very high on him and has remained so, and it looks like that's paying off for him. Picks up a couple. It's second down and eight yards to go. And we got a minute 29 remaining quarter number one here in Knoxville. Seventh play of this drive for Tennessee. Houston's defense spent an awful lot of time on the field. They must be getting a little leg weary right now with this heat here tonight. Here's the little mix up in the backfield, but they got away with it. Almost. Jermaine Copeland, the intended receiver, couldn't quite hang on, but there was a little mix up. I think Stevens thought he was supposed to get a handoff that time. And Got a little bit ragged on that play. Martin kept his poise after running into his running back and made a terrific throw right on the line. Just almost uh, had a great completion. There's the mix up. 
Ian Stevens kind of collide. Not quite on, right on the timing on where who's going where there. There's T, seven out of nine for 76 yards and a touchdown. Here comes a big third down and eight for him. Third down and eight for the Tennessee Vols. And a whistle blows May. Uh, timeout Houston. I thought they'd perhaps let the clock run out, but Houston has called a timeout with a minute 10 to go. They didn't like exactly the defense they had set for this one. They're going to gain when you try to stop them by running the football. They're going to throw that play action pass with Bobby Newcomb. What a tough offense. Well, when you looked at the ball game in person, I thought. And the T seems to be very cool, very much in control. The mixture of the pass, the run, and his throws have been crisp. He looks decisive on what he wants to do. And uh, a nice mix with Travis Stevens in the backfield, giving Tennessee a little different offensive look. We'll see Travis Henry, too, some tonight. They need to get these two guys ready because Jamal is going to have to have some help down the line, especially in this rugged Southeastern Conference schedule ahead. And there it's you a have it. Among the active coaches today, Philip Fulmer at 83%, Joe Paterno, Steve Spurrier, and Bobby Bowden. So Philip continues to be the winningest coach among the active coaches in the game today. And gained a few percentage points on Spurrier on that list last weekend. <laughs> and gained a lot more respect, perhaps, from the national media than he has. Well, he's really deserved a lot more than he has received. And I think last week was sort of a wake-up call for some of those folks when they saw how well his team was prepared for that game. There you see a minute 10 remaining in the quarter. Also, it's a third down and eight. Houston sneaking some people up on the line of scrimmage. Actually, they've got six men up there, and T. Martin gets away. Still running. Finally dragged out of bounds. It's going to be, I believe, a first down, but we'll see. Wayne Rogers, weak side linebacker, chased him down. There's the other dimension of T. Martin. We talk about his steady play as far as making decisions, and here's that look. Beautiful fake right there, Tim. He did, and he tucked it and ran. What I liked about the play was he was looking to pass first. When the, when the sideline came open, he could have run earlier. He wanted to try to get that ball in there for a touchdown, then when he couldn't, he ran. And he picked up a first down. First down and 10 to go for Tennessee in the Houston 19-yard uh, line. Here's the uh, quick pop in the middle once again, and Travis Stevens goes for two or three yards before he's closed down by the Houston backers Wayne Rogers once again the weak side linebacker made the stop for Houston your offense is doing pretty well when their worst plays are gaining two or three yards and that's what's happening right now because Tennessee's offensive line is controlling the line of scrimmage 11th play of the drive Jamal Lewis re-enters at tailback Travis Stevens takes a seat after a nice performance by him in the last uh, few plays so they're back with Jamal ball now and they give it to the big gun, and he is wrecked up at the line of scrimmage. Houston smelling that one out all the way. Perhaps the last play of the first quarter. Patterson Owens, the left end, perhaps the best of their defensive linemen, made the stop. De Rosselli is the nose tackle, and Adriano Belli is the other defensive tackle. Tennessee leads at the end of the first quarter of play by a score of seven to nothing. Pretty much all Tennessee in the first quarter. Time of possession, 10:46 for Tennessee, 4:14 for Houston. Tennessee's offensive line pretty much controlled the first quarter. They've been able to run and pass uh, pretty much at will. They're inside the 20. You got a big play coming up. They're going to be facing third and seven. If they're going to get out to, the, to a good early lead, uh, uh, a key play coming right here in this drive. So David Cutcliffe up here in the booth will try to figure out exactly the play that will pick them up uh, the necessary yardage, about eight yards for a first down. We go to the second quarter of play. Tennessee goes on the road now for a couple at Auburn and at Georgia. Then Alabama comes in here. So it doesn't get any easier. We saw Kentucky's high-powered offense today, although losing to Florida, it's still a dangerous situation when they come to town. And, well, everybody is, as a matter of fact, from here on out, it's, it's going to be uh, 
could be a dogfight almost every week for the balls. These fans you see on the screen are only on the Tennessee sideline. Houston didn't bring any, and, we're, and Tennessee is surely not going to furnish them any. Uh, they, they put out a little mist with that, a little, a little moisture, and then blow it on the players to help cool them down. Across the way where the visitors sit, uh, I see maybe, what, a couple of hundred red shirts over there. But not that many people came all the way from Houston with the team. All right, here's Tennessee with a big third and eight to start the second quarter of play. T. Martin, let's see what Cutcliffe has called for him. It's a little swing out to Jamal Lewis. He's looking for room. Touchdown, Jamal Lewis. What he called was the right play. 16 yards on the touchdown. In the first quarter, Houston had one first down, Tennessee 10. Terrific move after catching the ball in the flat and a great block that, no, it's legal. Terrific move to get around the first guy and a great block coming back when we first saw it. Thought it might have been a clip, but he, he hit him initially uh, clean and stayed with the block. Peerless Price, I believe, wasn't it? Yes. I believe it was. Yes. yes. Great block by Price, the key on that touchdown. Jeff and Hall's extra point good, and it's a 14 to nothing ball game. Houston had minus three yards rushing in the first quarter. Tennessee 83, passing yardage 76 to 16. This is a poised quarterback, looks downfield. His first choice is not open, so he throws a nice touch pass out into the flat to a guy who can make something happen with the ball. Actually, Peerless took out two guys. Jamal better pat Peerless on the back after this one. <laughs> one. One intentional block, one unintentional. So that brings out the chorus of Rocky Top as early in the first half here, second uh, play actually of the quarter. It's 14 to 53. 14 52 to go in the uh, first half. Tennessee on top, 14 to nothing. Martin's poise is it seems to really stand out in the early going. He seems to be in complete control passing game running game and as a field general. Here is Sanford back deep to receive. He's the real deep threat for the uh, Houston Cougars. And Jeff Hall will be kicking off for for Tennessee. Early seconds of the second quarter the balls have broken on top 14 to nothing. Defense has been able to pretty well shut down Houston in just about every facet so far. Hall gets a foot into it. Gets a lot of foot into it. Deep into the end zone, into the checkerboard. There will be no return on this one. Houston will set it up first and 10 on their 20-yard line, and Tennessee's defense now goes to work. There's the scoring drive. 12 plays, 83 yards, 450 on the clock, and Lewis 16 yards for the uh, final touchdown. Stevens, uh, the workhorse in that drive, 34 yards. Jeff Hall has always been strong on field goals, but he seems to have gotten stronger on his kickoffs. More balls being uh, down in the end zone as touchbacks. Real big story in that uh, first quarter was time of possession. Tennessee almost 11 minutes. And totally dominated the time of possession. Here's McKinley. Got some time to throw and throws complete. A beautiful strike out to the 43-yard line. Jerain, Jerron James made the reception. That was just an ideal pass. 23 yards on the strike. He had time that time, uh, Tim, and when you give any quarterback some time, you're going to have some problems. He does. Good blocking. Tennessee doesn't get much pressure on him, and this guy's got a very strong arm. He rifled it down the sideline over Tennessee. Strong safety. Nice throw. Fred White and Steve Johnson closing in, but a little too late. So it's first down and 10 to go for the Cougars. They go to Sanford, their tailback, and he goes crashing across left tackle for about three yards before Al Wilson from middle linebacker, along with Raynock Thompson, made the stop for the balls. We're early in the second quarter. Tennessee's on top, 14 to nothing. Right now, Houston showing their first offense of the night. There's Sanford, their key offensive threat as far as running is concerned. Jason McKinley, big quarterback, six foot three, 222 pounds, back in the pocket, got some pressure this time, and it paid off for Tennessee. Raynock Thompson coming on the outside blitz, and McKinley had to get rid of it, had no chance to complete that one. 
defensive coordinator John Chavis decides enough's enough early on and decides to come after him with a blitz. Raynock Thompson pressuring him into a bad throw. Uh, Tennessee has been more aggressive, more blitzing uh, early this season, and they come back to it right there. Okay, here comes for the Tennessee defense a test. It's third down and six. McKinley wants to throw, fires, it's complete. And it's going to be a first down. They had him for a second there, short of the first down, but he spun away. Jareen James made the play, and he made it on his own, enough for a first down. Steve Johnson had good coverage out at the corner, but he missed the tackle after catching it. Had they made the tackle, it would not have been a first down. So they convert. And Houston moving the football into Tennessee territory right now. Cougars... Looking at a first down situation, the handoff goes nowhere this time. They gave it off to uh, Leaf Penn. No, I'm sorry, it's Mike Green. Leaf Penn is the number three tailback. Green is the number two tailback behind Sanford. So actually, if anything, he lost a happy yard. There's Al Wilson, a uh, little bit shaken up on that play. Chris, Chris Ramser will replace him in the middle. Doesn't seem to be serious, perhaps just the breath knocked out of him, but uh, hopefully it's not. Here's McKinley rolling back, giving off on a counter, and there's nothing there. That's the counter trade that Houston ran so successfully against UCLA. Tennessee read it all the way, and Tennessee's speed shut the play down. String it out. They're trying to come around. Penetration. Once again, it was Green, who is six foot, weighs 230 pounds. Pretty good sized guy. Tennessee's run defense has been terrific so far again tonight. All right, they're looking now to third down and 12. Tennessee defense digs in. They're coming Here after, they come. They're coming after him. They're and coming after it's him. Lights out. Again, Chavis goes to the blitz when he needs it. Raynock Thompson, 11th quarterback sack this season for the Tennessee defense. Eric Westmoreland was also there with Raynock. They walk up, a little delay, and here come the linebackers. Thompson jumps the back and makes the tackle. Great effort by Raynock Thompson on the blitz. Here he comes, another look, a little holding perhaps. Thompson makes the play. See Will Overstreet in there too. Saavedra gets his kick away. It's taken on the 10-yard line by Eric Parker, and he's up across the 20. Let's see where they mark it. They say he stepped out around the 21, looks like. Nice first move to get a few yards. Yes, it looked like he could have been trapped back there. Punt 46 yards and the return 11. So the Tennessee defense digs in and holds on a third down situation. And I know John Chavis wants to see more of those third down stops. Tennessee stays aggressive when the, the, the last time on third down they, they just rushed four and, and Houston picked it up that time they came after the quarterback. Up to the line of scrimmage T Martin's got Jamal behind him at tailback. A couple of receivers split out here at the bottom of your screen they pitch it to Jamal he's trying to find daylight he found it. Here comes the big train across the 40 up across midfield and into Houston territory to the 48 yard line Jamal Lewis Mike James strong safety made the stop for Houston 31 yards for number 31 great ability to cut and then turn on the speed for a big back a lot of that's Jamal Lewis there's some blocking there but a lot of that's Jamal Lewis Power football. They spot it on the 48-yard line of Houston. That's where it's first down and 10 to go. Jamal's figure 64 yards thus far. Whistle and there's some movement. Lee Jarvis, excuse me, Josh Tucker's in at right tackle and he decided that was on quick set. <laughs> Josh Tucker in there for Jarvis Rito. Moved a little too quick, so it puts Tennessee in the position now of being first down and 16. There you see the penalty yard so far in this ball game. 10:55 remaining in the first half of play. The ball's on top, 14 to nothing. Whistle and off to Jamal, but the whistle will kill it. And did we have movement again? 
That's what you would think the way that flag was thrown. Here's referee Al Ford. Illegal snap. Getting a little bit of this lack of continuity that we haven't had much, in, in, or Tennessee has not had much in the first three ball games. All right, they're going the wrong direction right here. It's first down and 20 now for the Volunteers. T. Martin and another whistle. Illegal motion again against Tennessee. Three straight five yard penalties. And those are what you call thinking penalties. Not thinking. Five penalties right now for Tennessee. Coach Fulmer's going to talk about this, I believe. David Martin, I believe, has entered the game right now. This would be his first appearance of the year. Young man who's had a problem with a hamstring. Let's take a look. Right tackle, right guard, both move. Mm -hmm. Col Coleman's jumping a little too quickly, or we may not get, be, Tennessee may not be getting the ball snapped quite on time, but something's happening there. This is the, the kind of series that Tennessee's not had all season. Uh, they've not had one of those series where players were jumping and, and, and having consecutive penalties like this. Uh, Fulmer is not happy. He's got the offensive, the offensive line around him, and that's only the offensive line, Tim. <laughs> He's not talking about what they might have for dinner after this ball game over there right now. No, he is. Laid down the law at the halftime. UT's greatest plays. You'll be certainly interested in seeing that. Portrait of a champion and the stats and highlights. And the champion, of course, is Peyton Manning. So all of those things coming up for you at halftime. We've still got a lot of time to go before the half. 10.33 to go here at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville on a hot night. The Volunteers leading 14 to nothing, but they've just hit a series of mistakes here three straight penalties push them back to a first and 25 situation rushing Houston's got minus 11 Tennessee 108 yards on the ground T Martin fakes the handoff to his tailback goes deep and it's incomplete intended for David Martin David Martin ran that route and he seems to be okay Tim he's had a hamstring problem big receiver that they certainly want to get into the flow of the offense let's take a look fakes the dive throws deep maybe waits a, a count too long to throw but you're seeing lots of contact kind of getting caught up with each other they're trying to take advantage contact again they're trying to take advantage of martin who's six foot five against a five foot nine cornerback t martin eight out of 11 now for 92 yards and a couple of touchdowns got his back to the wall right now though second down at 25 Dumps it off here in the flat. Jamal trying to make something happen. And it's John Bryson. He's making a lot of things happen. Down the sideline. To the 10. To the 5. Touchdown, John Bryson. 63 yards. I believe you're going to see Eric Parker make the shield block at the end on the last defender. Great play to get in front of the defender without clipping him. And what a great effort by Bryson. He had that super run on the quick pop against Florida of over 50 yards. And here he comes up with a 63-yarder. Poise, nice throw. Good blocking right there. Hamilton with a good block. Downfield looks like Rito with a good block. Now you're going to see just got a little clip there of Eric Parker coming in and shielding the last defender that had a chance and what a great effort by Bryson. Scott puts it down. Hall puts it through. It's 21 to nothing. Tennessee with 10 9 remaining in the first half of play. Well they've made a series of mistakes there. They were brought to the sideline and literally chewed out by their head coach Philip Fulmer. The offensive line made the little mental mistakes and uh, Phillips said enough of that called them over to the sidelines and I guess it paid off. Maybe Bryson was listening in on that talk too because he ran like it. Not many teams have the luxury of having a fullback that can run a 4 3 7 40 and has such nice soft hands. Bryson's playing his way into the NFL so far this season with the ability to catch the ball out of the backfield and the speed he's got. Take Here you go again. again. Martin sets it up perfectly. Nice throw. Look at this cutback. 
There's a good move right there, just a fine open field move by Bryson. Not tackling well, and then you saw Parker who ran from behind and shielded the last tackler. Yeah, you had a better view of Eric Parker on that one. You were right on top of it, Tim. He did a fine job of taking out the last man who had any kind of a chance at him. I tell you what, the coaching staff at the University of Tennessee loved Sean Bryson. He, He's a complete football player. Very unselfish to give up the role of the tailback and move into fullback in Tennessee's offense, but they've gotten him the ball. Jeff Hall nails it once again into the checkerboard, and that's where they're going to keep it. They're not coming out of there with it. I don't believe Jeff Hall's back bothers him like it used to because he's booming these kickoffs. He's Kendrick, Kendrick Sanford decided uh, it best not to come out of there, and so the veteran tailback takes the knee, and Houston will take the ball at the 20-yard line. Houston Cougars trailing 21 to nothing against Tennessee. This is the team that really fought California. Almost won that game, losing 14 to 10, lost 14 to 7 to Minnesota, and then played UCLA off their feet before dropping that one. Tennessee jumping up in the line of scrimmage, putting the pressure on the quarterback. He gets it away and completes it. Nice job by the quarterback, Jason McKinley, that time just to get rid of it up around the 31 yard line. Chris Ramser's back in at middle linebacker. Al Wilson has a shoulder injury that's going to be evaluated at halftime. There looks like they're going to hold him out the rest of the first half. Orlando Iglesias was the receiver. He's six foot two, 218 pounds. He's been their best weapon here in uh, the early going this season, as far as receivers are concerned. Juco transfer. McKinley back. Quick pop. And it's complete. This time to Jerry and James, the flanker. And he's knocked down immediately, but he picked up a little bit of yardage there. It'll make it a second down situation for the Cougars. Tennessee has a, a pretty much a second team defensive line and linebackers in right now trying to give the starters a, a little rest. They're going to give him six on it, make it second down and four. Nine minutes to go in the quarter. Here's a tailback sweeping around the end and getting some running room. Got knocked out of bounds, but not before. Keith Sanford had picked up some uh, some running room. Had a chance to knock him down at the uh, line of scrimmage, but he slitter, slithered outside. Look right here, and you'll see. Doing a, a nice job getting outside. Uh, made some guys miss, and the right tackle did a nice job of holding Tennessee's defensive end and getting away with it. Judd Granzow made the stop. Junior college transfer for Tennessee. This time the ball's defense stands up and knocks him down. Sanford unable to get untracked that time as Tennessee came swarming in. Will Overstreet. Nice job of stopping him up. Ramser steps up in the hole. Good lick. Overstreet helps clean it up. He does. Big time. True freshman playing right defensive end. From the state of Mississippi. Blitz. Kenley throwing quickly. Up. That's a good play right there. Good pop that time, Tim. Uh, the right play. Quick slant against the blitz. Excuse me. I saw it coming. Wanted to holler to help. <laughs> That's an old defensive back calling the signals there. <laughs> but uh, uh, the right call against the blitz, good coverage. Good coverage by Gerald Griffin in the flat, but the right throw, nice catch by Glacius. He's a big receiver. There's not much way you can defend that if it's thrown perfectly right on time, and it's a timing pattern, and Griffin actually did a pretty good job to hang on. All right, Houston driving with a third and one. One of three on third down so far for the Houston Cougars, and it's going to be close. I think he might on second effort, uh, Sanford have made it. He did not on the initial hit, but he kept digging and finally got perhaps the first down. We may have to have a measurement. Now they're going to wave it downfield first down. Nice second effort by Sanford. He stopped up on the initial hit and just keeps that leg drive going gets the first down good effort by the tailback from Houston it's Tough. a 21 to nothing game Houston trying to 
get their offense in gear and get something consistent going here in the, the way of a drive. Tennessee with a lot of second teamers in there right now and still some of the first team. A quick hit in the middle. And it's good for a few yards before Tennessee's defense closes down. Got that counter tray again, and they made it work that time for about three or four yards. Tommy Baldwin is the running back who's not even listed on their depth chart right here, so they're reaching for some reserves also tonight. Tommy Baldwin at tailback. Receivers, three of them out in this pattern, and they come right back in the middle, and Tennessee closes it down. That's Leith Penn. Number three tailback carries for the Cougars. Tennessee closes down pretty good on that one to make it now a third down and five situation. Let's take a look, Tim. Had the obvious blitz on. Houston tried to counter it with a draw play, and he almost broke it. Corey Terry has been pretty active tonight. On defensive end, here's the handoff, and Tennessee drags him down in the backfield, and that's Corey Terry. As a matter of fact, the guy we were just talking about drops leaf pin. One Corey way to Terry one. crashing down from that defensive end spot. That's the way to stop that counter tray. That backside pursuit comes hard enough. Sometimes you can catch it, and here it goes. Corey Terry, great speed for a 260-pound defensive end, runs the play down from behind before it can get out of the backfield. Saavedra will drop back in punt formation, standing on about his 43-yard line with 5.23 remaining. In the first half of play, gets his kick away, and Tennessee's going to let it bounce and try to get into the end zone. Let's see if they down it outside. Yes, he bounced on into the end zone with it, but they say he's down at about the two-yard line. 41 yards on that one. I don't know about that play, Tim. Uh, looks like momentum might have carried him in, but they must have ruled him down with the ball on the field to play. Uh, Saavedra came in here with not very good statistics, 35-yard average, and he must like East Tennessee air or something because he's, he's kicked the ball very well for Houston tonight. He has indeed. Great coverage. Look at this effort. He's down. Proper call. Yep, it was. Thought his momentum had carried him in, but he was officially down before rolling into there. So Tennessee really with their back to the wall right here. Jamal Lewis is the tailback. You would figure he gets the ball. Well, no, T's going to keep it and just try to get a little daylight, and there's nothing there. The entire middle of the Cougar lines stood him up and Stood him back. 21 to nothing balls with their backs to the wall. There's T. Martin looking at the sideline to see what David Cutcliffe has in mind right here. And One of those situations where you'd just like to get it off the goal line and get a first down or two. David may say you're on your own on this one, T. <laughs> <laughs> see what you can come up with. Give the ball to Jamal. That's not a bad call, and it, I thought, was loose there for a second. I think it was. A fortuitous bounce for Tennessee. Jamal recovered his own bobble, and in the meantime, picked up a little bit of yardage. Ooh, lucky bounce that time. Mike James was the one clawing at him and trying to take it away. Strong safety for the Houston Cougars. Good hit inside. If Lewis has had an Achilles heel at all, it's been the fumble bug, and he needs to hang on that ball on his own goal line. This time they try that basically the same thing on the other side, and there's nothing happening, but there is a flag down here on the near side of the field. If it's against Tennessee, there's not much further back they can go. <laughs> It's a little bit of a break. Lining up in the neutral zone for Houston, so it's a five-yard penalty and shoves it out a little bit uh, more breathing room for Tennessee. Second time, they've been a little anxious on, on a third down play and lined up all sides. There's Kim Helton, who has spent most of his coaching career in the NFL as an offensive line coach. Sometime with the Oilers, the Raiders. Now the head coach. Played at the University of Florida. Balls with a little bit of a break. Third down and three. Let's see if they could pick up the yardage right here and keep 
the clock running in the first half. They fire it out in the flat. Houston waiting for it all the way. Cedric Wilson receiving that one and didn't fool anybody from the Houston team. Outstanding coverage on the quick out, a play where usually you get a little more room than this. Some guts, gambling by the cornerback to, to have that tight of coverage. And you made Fields. a great play. Yeah, he's been a very active cornerback uh, tonight for uh, for Houston. Sure tackle. First punt of the ball game. Leverton will stand a couple of yards deep in his end zone, and he gets it away. Pretty good kick out to the 49-yard line of Houston. Tennessee's coverage is very good. Jerry and James, the kick returner, couldn't find much uh, room that time. Punts for 41 yards. The return is for five. Coming up with 237 left in the half. It's a place where Tennessee wants to shut them down and not allow Houston to get on the board in the first half and keep the momentum going into the locker room. Houston would very much like to get it going. McKinley wants to get this ball in the end zone and give, give Houston some momentum going into halftime. Houston looking for confidence right here, a confidence-type drive or play. Tennessee's defense looking to choke them down. Here's the pass in the flat, and this is going nowhere. Tennessee are really ready for that one. Gerald Griffin dropped jo uh, James just as he caught the ball. Gerald Griffin is a fine athlete who some thought lost a little confidence in last year's Florida game, came back in this Florida game and played well, and I think will be a big contributor, Tim, for the rest of the season for Tennessee. Very nice play. Tough coverage, and they've walked up on him this time. A little pressure. Here comes Tennessee, and they'll knock him down again. And it's Dion Grant hitting uh, Petrick Sanford. Sanford unable to turn up field because Dion was all over. Tennessee's in a man-to-man -man coverage. Free safety's got the back out of the backfield on that. And uh, Grant makes a nice play, reads it all the way, and, and a, delivered a big hit. So in two plays there, Houston has lost a couple of yards, bringing up a third and 12. The area that Tennessee needs to improve on there. Two of six and third down, Houston is. Ball's coming, and Tennessee fell down. Gerald Griffin fell down on the play, leaving the receiver wide open. Orlando Iglesias, and he's all the way down to the 20-yard line. It's a 27-yard play. First down and 10 to go for Houston. Threatening now. And a flag is thrown after the play is over. You have to figure something was said there. Got a little too much mouth going on down there. Somebody said something because there was no Houston player around. It was all Tennessee players. Excellent protection. Good throw. The defender slips down. Iglesias is a big, strong runner. So the penalty moves it down to a first down and 10 situation with the ball at the 11 yard line. They could actually pick up a first without scoring. Here is McKinley pitching to Kittrick. Kittrick Sanford tries to cut the corner and gets a little bit of room, gets inside the 10 and to about the seven yard line before Dwayne Goodrich runs him out of bounds. Tell you what, these penalties tonight, uh, Tim, have been really unnecessary on Tennessee's part, the type that uh, drives a coach crazy. Thing that Tennessee has not done. They played with great discipline up in the first two ball games, and uh, they've hurt themselves with some penalties here. So far, it hasn't hurt them on the scoreboard, but it may before the half's open. McKinley now 10 of 12 for 102 yards. Here he is looking in the end zone. He doesn't have time. He is smothered by Dwayne Walker. There's Walker, the strongest of the Tennessee defensive linemen. This strongest play, guy on the team, as a matter of fact. This play is really made by Tennessee's strong safety, Fred White. The outside coverage by the cornerback was good, but White broke right into the pass lane. You saw McKinley hesitate where he wanted to throw, and that hesitation was just enough to allow the sack. Darwin Walker made the stop. 
Here's McKinley, Jason McKinley, the quarterback. Tennessee may have jumped off sides, or there may have been movement by Houston. We'll wait and see. Something went awry at the line of scrimmage, and the flags flew on both sides of the field. And apparently Houston did move. Fifty five seconds remaining now in the first half of play and the clock is running. It's third down and 18 to go for Houston. Twenty one to nothing. They have a very good field goal kicker. The crowd, crowd, crowd's getting back in the game. There you see the clock ticking away. We may go for the end zone with one shot right here and then try to kick a field goal. Pass is incomplete. Tennessee defending it real well. Red White, Deion Grant back there in the flow. Andre Lott also defensively in the picture for Tennessee. Take a look. Pressure coming from backside again. That's Corey Terry, and it was nice coverage by Andre Lott. All right, uh, Waddell on the season. He's four of seven. His longest has been 52 yards. This will be set down on the 25, making it a 35-yard field goal attempt for Mike Waddell of Houston. It's on the way. It is no good. So with 22 seconds, the clock stopped. Tennessee holds. And it is still a 21 to nothing football game. Good. Both teams have made their share of mistakes though tonight as far as little silly penalties are concerned. That has certainly happened. I think one thing the Tennessee uh, faithful are seeing a little more obvious good tight man to man coverage by the cornerbacks. Tennessee has had Steve Johnson at left corner. Uh, they had Griffin at left corner until he slipped and may have hurt himself a little bit. They played their third corner Andre Lott that time and he had good coverage too. So uh, there seems to have been an improvement. The numbers are pretty good for McKinley but he's making some very good throws but on the big plays Tennessee's coverage has been pretty good tonight. All right Tennessee's got uh, 22 seconds on the clock here. Uh, you figure they just run it out and not try anything in the way of a pass maybe even a kneel down. Take a 21 to nothing lead into the locker room against the Houston Cougars. He's going to throw the football. Well now he pulls it down. He's got plenty of running room down the sidelines to midfield and out of bounds at the 48. A little bit shy of midfield. Well he fooled me. I thought they'd kneel down on that one. He got 28 yards on it. One of those heart stoppers. You don't you don't want anything bad to happen to him. This is a dimension that Martin gives the Tennessee offense that they haven't seen in a number of years. The ability to pull it down and this guy can motor. Well it's up at the 48 yard line of Tennessee right now so with 11 seconds to go you might as well air it out here. Probably need around 20 yards to give Jeff Hall a chance. Houston decides to call a timeout and uh, try to set their defense. They anticipate no doubt uh, something down the field toward the sidelines to try to stop the clock at least and give Hall a shot. Tennessee up 21 to nothing with 11 seconds to go. And the big house is full again tonight. Over 100,000 in here as there always is to watch Tennessee. Last week was Tim an electric moment wasn't it? It very much was. I, I don't know that I've ever seen that much excitement. Uh, and and almost madness at the end of a football game in Nayland Stadium. It, it was an electric moment and it, it gives Tennessee an opportunity to not just have a good season and they've had several of those in, in recent years but it gives them the opportunity to have a great season and so far in the first half tonight it looks like the team realizes that and they've gone about their business very well. It's Randy Sanders there talking to uh, T. Martin coming up at halftime UT's greatest plays portrait of a champion Peyton Manning and of course we'll have the highlights and the stats from the first half of play which will be tilted naturally in Tennessee's favor since they're leading 21 to nothing. I guess the real plus here in the first half for Tennessee is they've got in a lot of players and got to see a lot of folks on both offense and defense. Here's T back to throw looks downfield fires got his man open and out of bounds with it is Jermaine Copeland down at the 32 yard line 
And that stops the clock with four seconds. 20 yard gain. T. Martin to Jermaine Copeland. Martin looks like a quarterback. He really looks like a quarterback in this first half. This is a confidence thing for him. Here's Jeff Hall. There he is on the list of top career scorers. Beck Sport still number one, a few Audrey Vays. And Hall's going to attempt it. It will be set down on the 38 yard line. It'll be a 48 yard attempt for Jeff Hall. It's blocked. And incomplete, and that's the end of the first half of play. Clock runs out on the blocked field goal. Tennessee scored touchdowns on three of the first four possessions, and they hold Houston to 99 yards total offense in the first half. Your impressions, uh, Tim, of the first half of play. Touchdowns, it's pretty much uh, Tennessee 15 to 8. Uh, rushing yards, minus 3 for Houston, 144 for the Vols. Passing 178 to 102 Tennessee. Total yardage, big edge to Tennessee, 322 to 99. And uh, UT with one turnover. And there you see the full house here tonight. First half leaders, uh, Sanford, as expected, rushing eight times for 20 yards. Their leading ball carrier all year. Lewis, nine for uh, 65 for Tennessee. The ball's dominating the stats and dominating the play. And the official attendance here tonight, 106,417. 106, 417. All right, we're set to go. The second half of play, there's Kittrick Sanford standing deep. And Jeff Hall will kick off for the Tennessee Volunteers, 21 to nothing leader. He's been booming them into the end zone tonight, and he does again here. <laughs> Terrific year so far for Jeff Hall. He's having All-American type credentials, uh, Tim, on this early going this season. You bet, and whatever Jeff Hall did this summer to help the kickoff, uh, He's done done a great job of it. None of them returned tonight. I, I believe that's our fourth one. Jason McKinley's figures from the first half. Pretty good. 10 of 12. 102 yards. He hasn't been able to get a consistent drive going. It's been his problem. There's the big youngster, sophomore from Austin, Texas. Steps under his center and pitches back to his tail by Keetrick Stanford, who cuts back inside and gets good running room across the 25-26 yard line before Corey Terry trailing on the play made the stop for the balls they pull it back closer to the 25 means he's got five yards to go for a first it's second down for the Cougars coach Kim Helton of Houston trying to bring football back to prominence for this school Here's the delay handoff to the tailback. Tennessee waiting for it. They stop him right on the line of scrimmage. Keetrick Sanford had nowhere to go. Tennessee jammed that one up real good. Bob Ramsey is back in at middle linebacker. Apparently the decision is to, is to hold Al Wilson at least at this point. If he's not needed, uh, that would be the decision, the wise one to make. All right, it's a third down and five situation. Here's the pass in the flat, complete, and across the middle, turns it into a big play. Jerry and James makes the play for Houston. Looked like Tennessee had it pretty well defended there. Let's take a look, Tim. Nice, nice protection, a little curl route. Westmoreland went for the, for, to try to defend the ball and knock it down and, and missed the pass. First down for Houston. Covered 14 yards. There's James numbers on the night. Seven big catches. Here's the cutback. And again, some nice running room. Digging almost close to a first down. That's Leaf Penn carrying the football for the Houston Cougars. Good blocking. Tennessee's overrun the play just a little bit with its defense. And uh, cut back get some yards it now becomes a second down and two Houston showing some punch here to begin the second half they hand it to the tailback the first down and a lot more all the way into Tennessee territory to the 39 yard line leaf pin listed as their number three tailback and it was Corey Terry who made the stop but not after 
a 13 yard gain. You got Houston coming out with with two tight ends, two wide outs, one back, and they're trying to run it straight at Tennessee to start the second half. And Fred so White uh, stood him up. Corey Terry dropped him. So Houston driving with the football crowd kind of rising to the occasion now to try to help the defense a little bit right here. It's first down and 10 to go with the ball at the 39 yard line of Tennessee. Here comes Tennessee on the blitz and it paid off because McKinley's pass. Fred White really put the pressure on him and the pass uh, he had to throw it a little too quickly feeling the backside pressure and it's incomplete. Fred White on a safety blitz. Fred White on the blitz from the strong safety position comes hard. Big hit. Tennessee is starting this. Seeing the same thing again. White after him pulls up not to get a penalty. So it becomes second down and 10 for Houston. McKinley looking, lobbing long, a timing pattern incomplete. Intended for Jermaine. James and it was Andre Lotz who was over there defending for Tennessee. Jerrain James has had a good night but uh, couldn't quite get that one before the sideline caught up with him. There's McKinley. He's a big strong guy. He was the freshman of the year last year in Conference USA. Certainly got a good arm. Tennessee's got Lott and Griffin at the corners. Third down conversions. You see Houston four of nine. Let's see if they can convert here. Or Tennessee's defense can hold. Got time to throw. Throws it. Nice play. Heatrick Sanford was dropped by Gerald Griffin. There's a flag down. So let's hold everything and see if Tennessee did indeed hold or if we have a penalty against the balls. There's two ways to do it on third down. You can blitz them or you can drop back. That time Tennessee chose to drop back. They successfully defended, but they've gotten a personal foul against Tennessee. Well, you don't need that. After they had stopped them on third down, a personal foul keeps the drive alive for Houston all the way down to the 22 yard line where it becomes first down and 10 to go for the Houston Cougars. Here's that counter play again and a little bit of daylight across the 20 maybe three yards. Keetrick Sanford carrying the ball and Ramsier made the stop. That same counter tray they've been they've they've stayed with it that time they get about three or four Tennessee's uh, penalties are, are probably giving coach Fulmer uh, <laughs> ninth play of this drive the penalty kept it alive. I didn't see a Tennessee player come out. I figured whoever committed the personal foul would be coming out of there but it hadn't happened so far. It's second down and seven. On the roll, he throws. He's got a touchdown. Touchdown, Houston Cougars. Scott Reginbald, who's the tight end, 19 yards. Reginbald is a quality tight end, one of the best around, and he's one of four players on this team from Canada. Derek Edmonds. Got a bootleg action here. Got beat on that one. Tennessee didn't keep contain, and the strong safety got beat. So Houston gets on the scoreboard to make it a 21 to 6 game and Waddell will attempt the extra point now for the Cougars. It's up and it is good. It's 21 to 7. So that's exactly what Houston needed to start the second half. That's exactly what Tennessee didn't need is to get a Houston team trying to build up some confidence here Tim. They very much did it. That was that was a fine drive. They they mixed in running and passing. Uh, hit Regim Ball, that, who who they believe is is an All-American candidate at tight end. Ran a great route to get down in the corner, and the big play of the entire drive, a 15-yard penalty against Tennessee when they had held him on third down at about the 40-yard line. Personal foul penalty against Tennessee kept the drive alive when it looked like they had stopped it. And you're right, that was the key play. I'm a little bit surprised we haven't heard from Regin Bald earlier tonight because he had a lot of hype from the Houston uh, folks coming into this ball game. Now, Most of their players are from Texas, but they do have 
seven, I think, from the state of Florida. They have four, oddly enough, from Canada, and he's one of them. Travis Stevens will drop deep back to receive the kick from Waddell, and all of a sudden, Tennessee is looking at a two-touchdown situation here. Leading by two after dominating the first half, they come out and let Houston drive downfield and score on them in the uh, early third quarter. Crowd of 106,000 plus looking on, and there's the kick by Waddell, and it's going to be short of the goal line, taken at the four by Travis Stevens. Looking for some daylight, gets across the 20, pretty decent return of 20 yards. And Tennessee puts it in play, first down and You're 10. going to see a great block by the left guard who pulled to lead to McKinley. Got him out in the open. Reginbald takes it in. Bootleg action gave Tennessee secondary a tough time there. Jamal Lewis is in a tailback. The drive, 10 plays, 80 yards, 355 on the clock. Reginbald with a 19-yard touchdown run. After the catch, here is the ball offense now going to work. Pitch back to Jamal Lewis trying to turn the corner. Does get a little bit of room, about five or six yards before he's run out of bounds by Jason Parker, a true freshman who was inserted into the lineup tonight for Houston because of injuries in their secondary. I would have thought Tennessee would have picked on him a little bit more than they have. They've been going to this side of the field primarily to their right. Clock running, 10-25. Third quarter of play. Vols leading 21 to 7. Houston jumping around in the middle, and they bobbled up everything. I thought for a second Houston might have jumped offside, but apparently not so. Uh, the fullback Sean Bryson could find nothing in there. In fact, he bobbled the football and recovered it. That's the third fumble. They've had one loss tonight. Jamal, remember one time, fumbled the ball and recovered his own fumble. Now Bryson does the same. Stunt by the nose man gave him problem there. I tell you what, if they had turned it over right there, we could have had ourselves a real sticky situation as far as Tennessee is concerned. Right now the ball's looking at a third down and three. They need three for the first. They didn't get it. Jamal Lewis comes up, I think, short. There is a flag down, but this... There's a timeout for an injury, for one thing. One of the Houston Cougars deep down in the secondary. There's Kim Helton, who seems to be calling for a clip, it looks like. But he won't get it. Tennessee, though, will be forced to punt, so Houston not only drives for a touchdown here in the third quarter, they stand up and stop Tennessee short of a first down, and Philip Fulmer now begins to uh, look a little bit more concerned on the sideline. David Leverton, his last punt was for 41. He's back standing around his 20-yard line for the Tennessee Vols. Coming out of the dressing room, Houston has come out with momentum. Tennessee has come out a bit flat. Uh, Houston's going to get the ball back, probably in reasonable field position. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see how the defense reacts. Can't get the number just yet of the injured uh, Cougar down there because the training staff's working in, in front of him. It's I'm not sure. It seems to be a, a knee or an ankle, a left knee or ankle. Looks like uh, Mike James, the strong safety. Six foot, 209 pound junior. For Alabama does. The draw play to Alexander underneath handoff has a decent hold, but Garner strips him of the ball along with Wilson. Arkansas comes up with the ball. New running back in there. The tailback is going to be over to the left side. Rod Stinson, can he get to the goal line? No, he stopped just short at the one. So they're trying to get everybody involved. Chikuma's already got a touchdown, so does Madre Hill the last time. And they said Stinson may be the quickest of all three of the running backs. He may be the biggest home run threat. He's a sophomore from Pine Bluff, averaging 25 yards on kickoff return so far this season. Houston drive downfield and score on them, and then fail to convert a first down on their next possession. Crowd, so, crowd's kind of gone quiet. Yeah. Will they get with the crowd get back in this ball game as, as Houston uh, takes over? 
There you see what's ahead for the balls. They go on the road for two at Auburn at Georgia. Come home and take on Alabama. Then head to South Carolina. UAB in here for homecoming. Then Arkansas, a team that's probably better than a lot of people thought this year. Kentucky with Couch throwing the ball all over the field. So nothing is easy. Leverton set to punt. Gets a little pressure, but gets away a pretty nice kick. Backing up the receiver to James, the 22-yard line, and he's up to the 25, and then driven back about five yards. 45-yard punt, two-yard return, officially in the book. Nice coverage. The, the Tennessee had a, a wall of coverage down there, nowhere for James to go. Uh, the, the, the punt team uh, paid attention to that practice uh, and, and covered that one well. They were sprinting downfield. Raynock Thompson, uh, one of the primary hitters that time. All right, Tennessee's defense will try to dig in and stop Houston. Houston's got some momentum going now after that last touchdown drive. It's a 21-7 game, 9-11 to go in the third quarter. We've got a world of time to go in this football game. And Houston trying to build some confidence. McKinley throws incomplete through the hands of the receiver, James, his flanker. Around the conference today, boy, it looks tough for South Carolina. They took a beating today at the hands of Mississippi State. Kentucky lost in a shootout in Gainesville, 51-35. Ole Miss came from behind to beat SMU. Alabama is trailing Arkansas in the third quarter. And Idaho and uh, LSU just getting underway. Auburn, Georgia, and Vandy all enjoyed a week off. All right, McKinley pitches back to Stanford. He's coming back to his right and trying to cut inside. It's not open. Tennessee closed it down quickly. Dion Grant, one of the first men up to make the uh, contact. T Tennessee goes to a blitz look, trying to put the pressure on. D'Angelo Lloyd makes him go deep, and Grant comes up to make the hit. Tennessee's decided to go after him. Sanford, 11 carries, 26 yards. Keep trick Sanford, their tailback, 5'8", about 210 pounds. This time the quarterback drops back, throws in the flat. It's complete and knocked down. At the 27-yard line is Montgomery. Fred White made the stop. There's Fred out of the safety position. So it's a good play by Fred White. Tennessee keeping the receiver in front of him, Tim. Tennessee goes to the blitz again and good coverage by White. Shuts down Houston. They're going to have the opportunity to see if they can get back control of the ball game. Savidra, Joey Savidra in punt formation. Tennessee put a little bit of a push on him, but he got his kick away. Taken by Eric Parker and nowhere to go. Jermaine Copeland not returning punts tonight. 36 yards on that one. Got a little bit nicked up, I think, in practice this week, uh, Tim. So they're taking a look at some other guys. I'm not sure that they won't go with some other folks. Jermaine is a sure, absolute sure-handed guy when it comes to receiving a punt, but doesn't have the breakaway speed that you probably want from your punt return people. Josh Tucker at right tackle to open this, this drive. T. Martin needs to get some offense going right here. Puts it in the stomach of his fullback, his tailback, and that's the right man to do it. Jamal Lewis down the sidelines. And touchdown, Jamal. 59 yards like a runaway train down the sidelines. Great lead blocking here. Fullback breaks a tackle. And it's been since the Herschel Walker and Bo Jackson days that this league has seen a big back with a speed like Jamal Lewis. Look at the last guy. He even just literally didn't even phase him at all. <laughs> he's a bull, but he's a fast bull. <laughs> There's Jeff Hall's kick. And it is good. And Tennessee answers Houston's touchdown this time rather quickly, 28 to 7. Jamal Lewis has now got 12 carries for 133 yards and a touchdown. Big, big play for Tennessee right there after Houston had appeared to have gotten a little momentum back. The tackles crashed the line down. Great lead block by Bryson. That's three tackles that have bounced off of him, three players. Watch him outrun a cornerback. That's amazing for a guy look that at, weighs. Look at this. 
Ah. <laughs> Didn't bother me. What was that? A back that's 230 pounds that can outrun cornerbacks. That's amazing. Throws that head back and doesn't want anybody to catch him, does he? That's right. All right, Tennessee will be kicking off to Houston now. There's Jamal. And there are his numbers on the night. Already a very productive night, and we've still got a lot of time to go, although not sure how much more he'll play. But 7.36 remaining in the third quarter of play. Tennessee 28-7. to Lewis has brought the crowd back into the ball game also. Yes, he did. Jeff Hall, who's had a super night of kicking off, all of them non-returnable. This one high and to the goal line. So they're going to try to come out of there. Bobbled it for a second and still running with the football. Good return out to the 23-yard line is Keetrick Sanford. Sanford does a little bit of everything for him. Does it all. Another Cougar is injured. 23 yards on the return. Let's take a look. He caught it. Bobbled it. Ooh. Comes out of there looking for a crease. He breaks the tackle right here. Tough runner. Tough runner for a, for a kickoff return man. And a Houston player is down at about the seven yard line. So that's the official timeout for the injury. Stops the clock at 724 to go in the third quarter. Tennessee up 28 to 7 going on the road to Auburn next week. Auburn had this week off. So the Auburn Tigers, uh, Tim, will have had two weeks to prepare for Tennessee. And Auburn defensively is about as tough as anybody in the league. They've got a great defensive line. Uh, that will be a tough place to play crowd wise. So uh, Tennessee will have to get ready to go. Uh, I, I, you, you're probably going to see Tennessee come after their quarterback a lot. But defensively, Auburn's tough. Tennessee will have their hands full next week with that. The Houston player is up and leaving Ego. on his own Ego. power. Uh, wow. Al Wilson has a sh shoulder separation. Here's the return on the right of your screen. You're going to see the hit that takes. Looks like Fred White. Making the hit for Tennessee. All right. Here's McKinley back to throw. Lobs it out there. Timing pattern. Flag on the play. It's complete. But let's see if there's interference. Little push off perhaps by Iglesias that time. There's the injury to Al Wilson. A shoulder separation. Tough, tough break. Hopefully it's not, not a bad separation. That's the kind of thing that can bother you all season. Orlando Iglesias was shoving off going downfield and got caught with it. Tough break for Houston, big break for Tennessee. That's uh, Wilson's injury is particularly tough when you consider Sean Johnson broke his leg in the first game and, and, and uh, we're now playing third middle linebacker, but Ramsey has done a pretty good job so far. We'll try to spot Al on the sidelines and see. I'm assuming he's out of uniform by now. Here's McKinley. Delayed in the middle, Tennessee ready for it. Wow. That's Ramsur. <laughs> Chris Ramsur. What is it? Replaced Al Wilson, number 41. He's out for the next game, at least it appears. Al Wilson will miss the Auburn game. He's at least out for the remainder of this game, and I guess they will, you know, it'll become a day-to-day -day situation as to whether he is available for Auburn, but he will not play again here tonight. Tennessee's defensive line just collapsed uh, the offense of Houston on that play. Here's McKinley feeling some pressure, rolls out, gets away from the pressure, fires. They call it complete to James. Jerry and James caught it, apparently dragging those feet as he went out of bounds, and it is a pretty big play, but it's not a first down. It'll be third down for the Houston Cougars. Remember that penalty that set them back on the offensive pass interference half the distance to the goal line. So they still need about 13 yards to go for a first.
Do you send them here, Tim? I'm thinking they're going to send send them from the top. It looks like definitely they're coming. May have come a little too early, or Houston may have jumped in anticipation. We'll see. Flags are falling. A lot of laundry on the field. Stops the clock at 6:18 to go in quarter number three. The ball's up 28 to seven. Sometimes your offensive linemen get anxious when they see them walking up, trying to get to the right, be able to get to the right spot to make the blocks. And, and as Tennessee's linebackers walked up for the blitz, Houston jumped that time. Just the threat of a blitz sometimes is a good play for you. That was the case for Tennessee. They may be coming again. Here is safety was coming. Here's the pass out in the flat complete, but it'll be far short of a first down. Leaf pin coming out of the backfield, a little swing pass, but. Not enough for the first down, and so Houston will have to go into punt formation. There's Al Wilson on the sideline with a separated shoulder. He's out, of course, for this game, and I guess we'll just have to wait and see what the trainers have to say and the doctors regarding the Auburn game. But I'm going to guess, Tim, that's a questionable thing for Auburn. That's Very tough. much so. It's tough because you just keep hitting and hitting and hitting with that shoulder, and it makes it hard to get it well. Here's the punt. Savidra drives it out of there pretty good. It's taken by Eric Parker, and he's across midfield. A kind of a bold move by Parker getting into Houston territory at the 49 yard line. 36 yards, 10 on the return. Flags are down. Flags are down right here in front of the Houston bench. It came from an unusual spot. You got to wonder if somebody on Houston's bench is not getting vocal, too vocal on the sideline. That's way away from the play. It surely was. It may have part to do with the play, but I, it was hard to see. Blocking the back by the return team, 10 yards, first down. Blocking the back on Tennessee's part was the call. I thought the dreaded wave was about to start there for a second. Hopefully not when Tennessee has the ball. <laughs> <laughs> Had a sickening feeling it was about to start. <laughs> All right, Tennessee with a first down and 10 with a ball spotted on their 37 yard line. Travis Henry has entered the game at tailback and he gets the call and he gets knocked down behind the line of scrimmage by Patterson Owens, big defensive left end, 276 pounders, six foot six. Oh, there is the wave. Oh, there's no way we can stop it now, is there, Tim? Uh, this is a great help to Tennessee's offense. <laughs> I, d I don't understand that. The only thing we need to top it now is to somebody bring out the beach ball. Huh? We've still got Josh Tucker right tackle, which makes you wonder if Rideau doesn't have some kind of problem with that ankle again. Second down, 11 yards to go for Tennessee. T. Martin out of the gun. Drops it out here on the side to Peerless. He's got a little bit of running room, still digging and fighting. He's coming up short of a first down, but it's very close. Emil White made the stop from free safety for the Cougars. Faking the draw, come up, make the throw just before he can get blocked. Nice move by Peerless. Right at the mark. Good solid stick by White, too. It was enough. They gave him forward motion enough for a first down. I thought he was about a half yard short, but not so. Price is not supposed to get hit like that in the open field. There's peerless work for the night. Very productive night. Tailback slot on the right side. Whistle. Movement by somebody. Coach Fulmer doesn't look happy on the sidelines. Too many penalties. That is the ninth penalty for 75 yards against Tennessee. Something Tennessee has avoided. Time out was called before the snap. Well, apparently this is not a penalty then. Coach Fulmer's time to talk to the officials <laughs> after lobbying time here tonight. <laughs> 
Well, Tennessee can take total control of this ball game if they can drive downfield with this possession and get it in the end zone. Uh, then it's going to be a time just to see what the final score is. But Houston's still in it as long as, as we've got this kind of score and, and they've got a chance to get a takeaway here. The situation this year in college football, uh, Tim, with the way things are set up for the championship game, you've got to hang around somewhere in the top four. You've got to be in that neighborhood toward the end of the season. Therefore, teams need to win impressively. I know piling it on sometimes actually goes against the team in the voting, you would think, but when you put those computers in it this year and all the other variables, I think uh, an impressive win is, is very important when you can get in that position to do that. Unfortunately, the way the system's set up, you, you need to pile on sometimes. Here's Tennessee looking at a first down and 10 with under four to go in the third quarter of play. T. Martin in the pocket, looking, firing long, got him. Down to the 30, stumbling and falling is Peerless Price. He could have perhaps gone all the way, at least a few more yards for sure. But he made a nice reception and a nice move anyway. 22 yards by Peerless Price. Houston showed blitz early. Tennessee did a great job picking it up. Price, th nice throw. Great arm strength. He throws all the way across the field, about a 15, 18, yard, uh, 15, 18 yards downfield. Perfect throw. Jamal Lewis is back in there. That's the type pass I think Peerless uh, T has been a little bit hesitant to throw in the first two ball games. Hasn't been called that much for him to begin with. Price six catches, 54 yards. Here is T. Martin going. He had him wide open, just overthrew him. Peerless was breaking for the end zone open. Just a little too much adrenaline on that one. A little too much uh, air under it, and Peerless couldn't catch up. Nice call by David Cutcliffe, even if that play doesn't work. They fake that, that, that quick hitch that they've been throwing uh, regularly tonight and let him take off. That buys you a little more room on the quick hitch next time you want to throw it. So it's not altogether bad to have an incompletion on that. That's one of those plays you call, and, and if it doesn't hit, you just want to get it far enough downfield to get them to back off your, your receiver a little bit. A shot of Peerless there, getting a little water on the sidelines. Man in motion coming to the bottom of your screen, and T. Martin is going to roll out this way. And keep rolling, and now throws. Incomplete. Intended for Jermaine Copeland, who almost came down with it. Jason Parker, the youngster, the freshman, the 5'9 guy, got up there and played it big. They call it an interception. They do. Probably a, an ill-advised throw. If you're going to throw this one, throw it on out of the end zone. Get all, get a little more mustard on it than he got. They fight for it there. I thought Jermaine had broken it loose, but not so. Parker hung on. Good play by Parker and underthrown. Pass was underthrown. Actually, when they both went up, looked like it fell down into Parker's hands there. There's T. Martin on the line with David Cutcliffe, no doubt. All right, Jason McKinley with new life. Hands off on the slant to Keetrick Sanford, and he got good running room. The time they ran the counter to the right. Sanford picked up some pretty good yardage before the balls closed it down on him. Judd Grouse now was one of the first to hit him. They're running that counter, counter tray, and it's working some for him in the second half. There's uh, Sanford's numbers on the night. 12 rushes, 34. Here he gets a little more room to run and probably enough for a first down as he crossed the 30 before he is stopped. First down and 10 to go for the Houston Cougars. 28 to 7, Tennessee leading. Houston trying to sustain a drive right here. Tennessee playing lots of people uh, defensively. Lloyd and, and uh, Overstreet are lining up at the ends now. Gooden is in there right now at tackle as well. Here is a rollout and a completed pass again by the quarterback. It's good for a few yards to the 35. Jerry and James is knocked down. There's Lott. Grass now. And Lott made the stop. Houston rolling out. Uh, uh, McKinley's getting a pretty good rhythm in the second half. His throws are crisp and on the spot. 
Tennessee's not giving them as many problems defensively as they did in the first half. He, he McKinley seems to be gaining some confidence. Bumbled the ball, but of course out of bounds. Jerry and James numbers on the night nine for 81. Here's McKinley got time, got his man. Dropped at the 41 yard line and I think I saw a flag go down in there. Montgomery was the man who was on the receiving end. Eric Edmonds and Dion Grant made the stop but there's a flag down and the officials are conferring. This is a huge penalty if it's against Houston. This is behind the line. They had picked up a first down. They are retreating. Too much extracurricular activity in this ball game on both sides. They, they, these late penalties for, for personal fouls are things where players are just losing their poise after and shouldn't happen. After the play happen. was over a personal foul against the offense, they picked up a first down, so it'll be first and ten after the penalty. After the play, so it's still a first down and ten, but it backs them up. They're lucky it was a dead ball foul. Otherwise, yeah. they would have been really backed up and had second down. They're at the 26-yard line, and that's where the uh, Houston Cougars will go back on the offense right here. A minute 44 to go in the third quarter. We've still got a lot of time in this football game. Tennessee up 28-7. to seven. Houston trying to mount an offense. Here's the handoff to the tailback. He breaks away from one tackle, but not the second and third. They drive him to the earth at the 20-yard line. Keetrick Sanford, Chris Ramsier was the man who drove him back. There he is, number 41, who's filling in for the injured Al Wilson at middle linebacker. Good penetration by Tennessee, making him break it back, and then gang tackling. Lots of new faces in the ball game. You're seeing Dominique Stevenson in on that tackle. Dominic, a converted tailback, who's a great athlete, and so they're hoping that he will learn the role at linebacker and be able to contribute there. Wing on the right side. Quarterback got plenty of time. Spots his man wide open. Up to the 43-yard line is James, who's having a career night here, especially in the second half. Grasnow made the stop. Good, great protection. Tennessee had his first choice covered. He pulls it down, has time, throws over the middle. Too much time that time. Uh, from a Tennessee standpoint, nice job by McKinley keeping his poise when his first choice was not open. You can't blame defensive backs when you have that much time to uh, throw. There's James, 10 receptions, already 99 yards tonight. McKinley in the pocket, a world of time, all the time in the world, and he's going to complete it. You always do with that much time. Look to Tennessee to start thinking about blitz. The, the four-man rush is not getting the pressure on. McKinley's got too much of a rhythm going as far as Tennessee's concerned. He's keeping his poise and, and rolling out. Here you go. Lots of time. Lots of time. Four-man rush. Uh, their offensive linemen have got Tennessee's defensive linemen all tied up. Plenty of time. He makes the throw. There was he keeps James wide open, but he tossed it to Baldwin, who was coming out of the backfield. And that's the end of three quarters of play here at Dealing Stadium tonight before 106,000 plus Tennessee is leading as we go to quarter number four by a score of 28 to 7. It was 21 to nothing at the half. Houston came back in the third quarter, got a good drive going with the help of a penalty when Tennessee appeared to have them stopped. They committed a personal foul penalty, which kept the drive alive, and Houston went on the score on a 19-yard pass to the tight end. And now they're hanging around again. Tennessee came back down and scored a touchdown, but it's been rather ragged defense for Tennessee for the past uh, couple of minutes or so here. They've got a lot of reserves in there, granted, but they're still uh, not getting any pressure on the quarterback. And this youngster, McKinley, has a good arm, and he's got some good receivers. And, and Glacius and James are very good. Probably seeing a little bit of that concentration breakdown that we thought might happen at the beginning of the game. Tennessee goes in ahead, 21 to nothing. Uh, there you can see the, the, the scoring by quarters. Tennessee up 7-0 after one and 21-0 at half, uh, playing an even third quarter. But I think you see somewhat of a letdown when you're ahead 21 to nothing and have dominated like Tennessee did in the first half, and that showed up in the third quarter. McKinley is 20 out of 26 for 194 yards. 
See if Tennessee decides to put more pressure on him to send a linebacker. Well, Wilson is still in the game, even though he's on the sideline. He's in it in that he is encouraging his players, his teammates, to play better. Here's the quarterback rolling, looking, going to fire it up there, up for grabs, and had a man really in front of Deion Grant, but James uh, was the man throwing. Little, tried a little trickery there, huh? Little trickery that didn't work. Tennessee's uh, secondary had uh, uh, had both sides covered well. Here you see, pitching back. He wants to throw deep, but the first choice is covered. The second choice is covered, and now we're going to we're going to just throw it up for grabs. And you see, although the receiver, Iglesias, number 18, was uh, in a position to make a huge play, rushing yards. 30 to 211 in Tennessee's favor. Here's a pass complete in the flat. Once again, they just keep nicking away. This is James again. Passing yardage, Houston 194, Tennessee 212. Total 224 to 423. Tennessee's favor, Gerald Griffin in on the stop that time. Good pressure, but McKinley is making great throws. That's, that's just a quick slant, and, and he's right on the money with the throw, even though he's under pressure, and Tennessee's got good coverage. Big third down. Jerry and James now has gone over the 100 mark in receptions. 11 catches for 105 yards. McKinley looking, being pressured, knocked down. Roger Alexander gets his first sack for Tennessee. Number 38 is Roger Alexander, 6'3", 220-pound junior. Third sack of the game. His first. This is the first time in a while Tennessee's been able to rush four people and get pressure. You see Alexander get rid of the tackle, make a nice play to keep McKinley from, from making the throw. Another good look. Pre not much pressure except for Alexander, but he breaks free. Four-man rush gets a sack. That's a big plus for your defense. Fourth down conversion. One of two, and they're going to go for it. Fourth down and six. Fourth and six, they're going. They lob it up there. Tennessee receiver. Terrific. Tennessee defender had his back to the ball all the way. Caught it out of bounds. Lots right on him. He never saw the ball, but he's right on him all the way. Goodrich not in the game must must have some kind of problem too because Lot's playing this whole second half and although he didn't see the ball then he's right on him all the way down the sideline. Nice coverage by Andre Lott. He's growing up a little bit tonight. His first real big playing time. Well, Steve Johnson is out now with a groin injury. He will not return. So that's the reason I guess Lot's in there. Two starters are out of there now. Al Wilson with a shoulder separation, a groin injury for Steve Johnson. So Lot is seeing a lot of time. Tennessee taking over after the failed conversion. Here goes the big guy, John Bryson, who's broke some big plays in the last couple of all games, including one earlier tonight on a screen play, play and then, of course, that great one against Florida, and he develops a, a knack for coming up with a big play. But we have a man down, and we may have had a flag down also. A uh, nice quick hitter. He breaks it. Probably if he goes left right there, he's got a chance to score. First down. They're calling holding on uh, Peerless Price downfield block. He had a great block. Maybe he tackled him. Maybe he had a great tackle. As Bry Bryson is down on the sidelines out of the field to play. There you see it. Mm. And Tennessee players are beginning to drop here tonight, Tim. Uh, that's that's uh, worrisome. Very much so with two big road games in the conference coming up. Here's the drive straight ahead by Jamal Lewis, and he got it two or three yards, but that's all. Steve Johnson out with a groin injury, a shoulder separation for Al Wilson, and now some sort of an injury for Bryson. Looks like he's in some pain on the sidelines, but not excruciating, perhaps. So let's hope it's nothing more than a little sprain. When they're hurt, it's nice to see them walk off. Anyway. Yeah, it is. T. Martin looking now at a first and ten, and here comes another flag. Getting real ragged here in the second half. We've still got 12 minutes and 29 seconds of football. Tennessee up 28 to 7. Let's take a look and see if we can find out how he got hurt here. Could have hit that knee. Yeah. 
going down. Looks like it's just. Looks like he might have had a bruise going yeah. down. If he's up that quick, that's good for Tennessee fans. Ten penalties for 85 yards for Tennessee. And they're looking now at his second and 15. Houston creeping up on the line of scrimmage, expecting a pass. They don't get it. They get a big run instead. Here comes the big guy rolling down across the 30. This is Travis Henry getting his first shot at tailback. Travis, big number 20, rumbling for 24 yards. Showed a nice move on this run. Watch this lead block. Bartholomew going through. Henry, great move to get outside and watch this one. A little juke right there. That's great good. move. Great move. Houston trying to strip it, but he hangs on to it. Tennessee's third tailback to have a long run tonight. Travis Stevens earlier came in and played well behind Jamal. Now Travis Henry's in there. Here's T cutting it up and gets some good yardage on it down to about the 26 yard line. D. Rosselli, Mike D. Rosselli made the stop from nose tackle, but not until T had picked up some good yardage. Tennessee seems determined to keep that option play in its offense, and, and uh, this perhaps is a night to work on it to where you can make it work. You got a solid five, so it makes it second and five. Clock is running at 11.17 and ticking away. Rushing yardage, you see it right there, a huge advantage for Tennessee. The Vols perhaps have given up more yardage through the air than they wanted to tonight, though. Bryson is an ankle injury, we're told. Here's the pass out in the flat. Nice Touchdown! Here it is. Rice. 22 yards. Great move after the catch by Peerless Price. Credit that touchdown to the play they ran in the third quarter where they faked that hitch and sent him deep. Here you see it again. Quick throw. See how the corners backed off that time? Man. Great move by Price. Great. If you remember the, the overthrow in the third quarter, that backed that corner off enough to run that play. They come back and get a touchdown out of it. Nice work by David Cutcliffe in setting that one up. Jeff Hall makes it a 35 to 7 Tennessee lead with 10 56 remaining in the ball game. Jeff Hall had one blocked earlier tonight, but otherwise he's been perfect. That was an attempted field goal that was blocked, not an extra point. Martin, 14 of 18 now for 234 yards, four touchdowns. Peerless really looked like the peerless of old there. He's got that quickness back. Last season seemed like he played the whole season with, with ankle troubles and a bit tentative. He, he, he looks like the guy with great quickness and speed again. You got it. He really looked good on that move. Watch this move. Mm. Jason Parker never had a chance. And then he's got the speed to turn it on from a dead stop and outrun the pursuit. Nice throw by T. Look at this move. Ooh. Tough. Parker will take some kidding in the film room Monday on that one. You can imagine. You can imagine. Ninth in UT career. Price is now. That moves him to ninth in UT's career receiving yardage. Moves him ahead of Alvin Harper, who had a fantastic career here. Now we'll see if Tennessee can keep the pedal down. They're, they're, they're in a blowout situation. See if they can keep the stinger going here for the last 11 minutes of the ball game. There's T. Martin getting, I'm sure, uh, some congratulations from David Cutcliffe and also some advice. Here is once again Jeff Hall into the end zone. They come out of there with it this time, though, from two yards deep and turns out to be a heck of a move. Flag is down. Jeff Hall is the last man, and Hall got it. Keetrick Sanford almost broke it all the way, but there's a flag back around the 13-yard line. This guy's one of the few kickoff returns that runs over people. He, he's run over people two or three times on kickoffs, and he ran over a Tennessee Holding tackle. On the return. It's all going to be brought back. But I'll tell you what, that spotlights uh, the athletic ability of Jeff Hall. Very few what? kickers are going to tackle a guy this size. Watch the explosion there. Watch the explosion of, of this guy. 5'8", 203. Not many kick returners can run over somebody like that. 
I tell you what, Philip was unhappy with his kick coverage before this ball game, and he's going to be unhappy with it after this ball game. And when you've got some burners coming up like Tennessee is going to be facing in the weeks ahead in the Southeastern Conference, uh, need to tighten it up a little in that area. Hand off in the middle, not much doing there. Keetrick Sanford carrying the football. I believe we've got a new quarterback, and it's Helton. Tyson Helton has come in, number 15, at quarterback. Coach's son. Coach's son. Son of head coach Kim Helton. Mark McGuire hit two home runs today, giving him 68 on the year. Sosa did not homer. Got him backed up. Let's see how Tennessee plays this. Sugarland, Texas, home base for Helton. And they drop him once again. It's Leaf Penn out of tailback. Little pop over the middle for a couple. Eric Westmoreland made the stop. Trying that counter tray again, and Westmoreland this time steps up in the hole and makes the play. Still a lot of time. Nine minutes, 41 seconds of football remaining. Tennessee 35 to 7. And Houston has changed quarterbacks. Jason McKinley actually had a very decent night. I don't know if he's banged up or not, uh, if there's an injury or not, Tim, but I wouldn't think his performance would take no. him out of a ball game. No. Helton throwing from down in the end zone. End zone. In trouble. trouble. Throws it at the feet of his intended receiver. Tennessee rush that time was very, very good. Bernard, Bernard, Bernard Jackson, I believe, is the one that's putting that pressure on. A, a player who seems to have been a fan favorite early on is getting some action now. Maurice Fitzgerald was also in on the play. Out of Pearl Cone in Nashville. There you go. Jackson from Louisville, one of Tennessee's top recruits this year, putting great pressure on from the defensive end spot. Saavedra in the end zone to punt. For the Houston Cougars. Kind of situation you might get a good return because they're backed up. Tennessee puts a little bit of pressure on him. Terrific kick. Absolutely great. Eric Parker cutting the corner down the sidelines. Good return across the 40 into Houston territory to the 37-yard line. 51-yard kick, a 21-yard return. I kicked his coverage a little bit that time. He, he, had, he really got it up and got it high, but when you're backed up like that punting, you're really trying to protect, so, so it gave Tennessee an opportunity to get a good return. And Parker looks like a natural back there. He's he got does. some quickness. He's got good hands. Uh, he's got the ability to make the first guy down there miss him, and Tennessee has a new quarterback. Bernie Vesey is in at quarterback for the Tennessee Volunteers with nine minutes to go in the ball game. Bernie BC takes over. Here's the handoff. And not much running room. Need to blow this one dead, folks. Travis Stevens being pushed back downfield. Bernie VC is from the state of Mississippi. Absolutely a terrific athlete. A lot of people thought when he came here, Tim, that he might wind up as a receiver or a safety maybe even a cornerback because when he checked in as a freshman I think he won all of the agility drills and so he's a good athlete but he's turning out to be a pretty decent quarterback in practice let's see how he does under the gun well he pitches back safely to his tailback and uh, the sweep by Travis Stevens is for a few yards shy of a first but positive yards these he has some family history in football his dad was a tight end at Ole Miss uh, about a year or two behind uh, Archie Manning it brings up a third down situation for Tennessee. About four to go for a first to keep the drive alive. Coach Philip Fulmer getting a look at a lot of players here tonight. He's had a couple of uh, injuries, though, that are disturbing. That'll be day to day. Al Wilson in street clothes on the sideline with a shoulder separation. Steve Johnson with a groin injury. And Sean Bryson with an ankle injury. Here's Travis Stevens still digging. That's a good move on his part. I think he's shy of a first down, but it was a great effort by Travis. There's T. Martin on the sideline, who's given way to Bernie VC now. He's almost doubled he's, his uh, completion yeah. total for the season. Came in with 16 completions, got 14 tonight. 
after 19 attempts for a whopping 234 yards. Good night. They're going for it on fourth down. Tennessee going for it deep in Houston territory. Here's the pitch back to uh, Stevens. He's got plenty of room outside and is going to get the first down. Travis Stevens, young man from Clarksville, Tennessee, rambling for a first down. Too much speed for him. They were coming hard on the corner uh, defensively. You see him come inside. Stevens simply cuts it outside, runs for the corner to get the first down. Tough little runner, and he's got some speed. Got 56 yards. Bryson getting some ice on that ankle, which is not exactly a good sign when you think about Auburn looming ahead. Here's the fake to the fullback. Throws it out in the flat. A nice play by BC. Down to the five. Down to the goal line. Touchdown, Tennessee. John Finlinson. Tight end. West Tennessee boy from Selmer. First, first catch, first touchdown of his career, and a great block downfield. 21 yards for the touchdown. Nice touch by Vizi under pressure here. And he lumbers home. <laughs> Nimble footwork into the end zone. He got the job done. Started out as an offensive lineman at Tennessee. They moved him to tight end last spring. Here's the all extra point. It's up and good. And Tennessee extends their lead to 42 to 7 with a lot of second and third stringers in there right now for, for the team. Finlinson, a happy camper as he heads to the sideline. Nice uh, poise by Vizi because when he came out of the out of the fake and started the bootleg, he had a guy right in his face. He saw the man wide open. No, no use to try to make an All-American throw. Just get it out there. Finlinson's heart had to be pumping when he turned around and saw nobody in front of him in that goal line <laughs> down there on his first catch. Well, it was a good play for the big youngster from West Tennessee. It was a good play for the quarterback from Mississippi. You're right, uh, Bernie Vesey showed a lot of poise there. Here we go with a, with a second look. Nice downfield block leading him. You're going to see just as he gets to the goal line here. Martin, look at that. Knocked the guy back in the end zone, helped him get in. Tennessee's downfield blocking has been excellent all night. We've had one whole one block called a tackle down there, but well, overall their, their ends have, have done a good job. Finlinson's first catch is for a touchdown. Vesey's first throw is for a touchdown. There's the youngster, Bernie Vesey, now operating at quarterback. Going to kick it straight up in the air and see what Houston can do with it. And that's what they do with it. They fumble it. Tennessee recovers. Great call by Philip Fulmer. You hate to have to go back that, to that, but if you're going to do it, that's the way to pull it off. Judd Brownsow made the recovery. Certainly well executed by Hall. Right off the face mask. And there's Judd right in the perfect spot for the play. And the Tennessee balls take over in great field position, ready <laughs> to put the kill on. There's folks out there we don't have on some of our rosters catching, making these plays. Russ Berry is going through the archives now <laughs> trying to find various players. Quick pitch out and bobbled, but out of bounds, and Tennessee does retain possession of the football. Kind of a dangerous situation there, but they hang on with yep. 6.15 to go in the football game. Tennessee up 42-7. to 7. The one play Tennessee continues to have trouble with offensively seems to be that option. We, we're, maybe perhaps you're going to have to dive somebody to make them make them play true defensively on that instead of just sprinting it to the corner but we've not ex Tennessee has not executed that very well here is uh, BC at quarterback yeah he's got a great night going one for one here's the pitch back to his tailback Travis Henry and he's run out of bounds after picking up a little bit of yardage there's big Travis Henry from Frostproof, Florida. Came here with great uh, credentials, been a little bit slow to develop, but at all times, Tennessee coaches thought he had that possibility, and now he's beginning to show it, Tim. 
Coach Fulmer has felt all along that really he had four good backs. He had to move one of them, Stevenson, the linebacker, but that he's had three tailbacks capable of winning in the SEC, and, and they're, the young ones are showing something tonight. Here's VC. Giving off to his tailback. Good running room this time by Henry. He may go all the way. Yeah! Touchdown, Tennessee. Maybe a flag down, though, on the far side of the field at the 11-yard line. It was for 35 yards. Let's see what the referee or the official on the far side is going to call. I suspect it's going against Tennessee, which will nullify a great effort by Travis Henry. This, this crew is uh, really likes to call holding downfield. Holding during the run, 10 yards from the line, from the spot of the foul, still third down. This is a Southeastern Conference crew. Get a look at the replay. Henry going outside. Watch this move cutting back. Outside, see coming back. See if we can back. find the hold here. I guess that's it. If, if that's it, it's uh, pretty picky. Pretty weak. Pretty weak. That was Bobby Graham trying to lead block, but... Uh, uh, that was uh, really not holding. Bit, bit of a weak call. Nice run. Tennessee penalties now 11 times for 95 yards. Here's the give in the middle. Not much going there. Philip Crosby running out of fullback position. We're going we're to get another look at it. Oh, he may have had his shoulder. And I'll eat my words. <laughs> yep, I will too. He had his shoulder pad. How Held about, on there. How about it did not make a difference in the play? <laughs> that, that doesn't. <laughs> it's like an uncatchable ball, you know. That's that, an that, uncatchable tailback that uh, time. Outstanding camera work proved me wrong. Guys in the truck right on top of it. Here's BC spinning. I think it's a busted play, but it may go for a touchdown. It's close. Travis Henry down to the three-yard line. VC spun around, and I think it was a busted play, or maybe Henry went to that side he didn't expect, but it turned out all right. Henry wants that touchdown back. I don't blame him. Nice job. 15 it yards on that one. Stopped up inside. Good cut to get outside. Good blocking downfield. And a Houston Cougar is down on the field. Here you go. Sec You've got a lot of second teamers in your offensive line playing right here, doing a nice job blocking Houston. Uh, Bernard Gooden is playing. Toby, Toby Champion is playing. They're doing a fine job up front. The outside linebacker, Lewis Hampton, 240-pounder, is the guy on the field who is injured right now for Houston. A real plus for Tennessee to get, get far enough ahead that, that second teamers are getting to play a lot. Yeah, there's Bryson with that uh, ankle injury, the ice on the ankle. I, he doesn't act like that's a, a real serious situation, but uh, tell you what, uh, when you take a look at Al Wilson's injury, which is a shoulder separation, so it's hard to believe that he could get back for the Auburn game. And Steve Johnson, the groin injury, they beginning to stack up, Tim. They are. They, if, if This has been a, a real positive night for Tennessee and an enjoyable evening for Tennessee fans to be at, be at the stadium. Uh, but a damper on it is certainly the injuries. Al Wilson is, is the, the heartbeat of this defense, and he'll be needed. There he is, Big Al. Already with that arm in a sling. And of course, for a linebacker to have a shoulder injury is, well, that's where all their work is done with those shoulders. Trainer Mike Rolo is going to earn his pay the next week trying to get these guys back in the ball game. Tennessee running backs tonight. Lewis 12 times for 133. Henry 5 for 66. Stevens 7 for 56 yards. So it's a productive night for tailback. Not much going here as BC hands off in the middle to Will Bartholomew. Fullback out of MBA in Nashville. Fulmer felt like tailback might be a strength, and, and this game is beginning to look like it is a strength position for Tennessee. First two ball games, uh, Henry and Stevens didn't get much playing time because of the nature of the games, but they, they look like in this ball game they can get Tennessee help down the road. And Tim, they're hanging on to the football. They're not bobbling it or juggling anything out there, so that's a another plus. It's a big plus to get BC a little playing time also. Some of these uh, defensive backs they've gotten in there tonight as well. There's 
Bernie Vesey looking now to second down and third situation handoff and nothing doing can't get it in there Travis Henry just kept bouncing outside but the blocking was not there and the pursuit was very good by Houston as they trailed it all the way and made the stop question now is going to be is Tennessee going to be willing to throw it to give these guys a chance to, to score that are out there on the field or are, we, or are they going to be content just to run the ball into the line well you're leading 42 to 7 and it's kind of a delicate point right here are it you is. running it up or are you just giving your quarterback a chance to make a big play or some of the other youngsters it's uh, there's the handoff they decide to go in the middle and it's going to be about a half yard shy of the goal line Travis Henry really earned a touchdown but he didn't get it he fought like crazy had one call back and this crowd what's left of them here and I guess a few thousand have drifted out should give this uh, unit right here a very nice round of applause because they did a real good job in there BC Henry and a lot of youngsters up front trying to give uh, the University of Tennessee a little bit of a, a depth situation as far as the Southeastern Conference play is concerned. They're going to give it to Henry, surely. <laughs> yeah, I think there was that a bobble, you think, there? Fumble snap. So Henry does not get his touchdown. We were kind of hoping that old Travis would get in there because he worked so hard for it. But BC kind of bobbled it there on the last gasp attempt. And so Houston will take over. But with the ball at the half yard line and two minutes and 30 seconds to go in the contest. Tennessee 42 to 7. And Tennessee has a lot of youngsters in on the defensive front here getting an opportunity to play. Looks like people in front of them all winning. So they probably can't move up in the polls, but they certainly can't move down. Hand off. Tennessee hit him on the goal line. It may be a safety. No signal from the official as yet. Ramzur made the stop. Uh, they're going to give him the ball, I guess, at the half yard line. Ramzur filled the hole. He saw, saw that lead back coming and filled the hole and really popped him right at the goal line. It was close. Take a look. Here's a look at it. Watch Ramsier come fill this hole that opens up. Big leg. He was out of the end zone. I guess his forward motion did get him out of there by a half yard. Elton going to try to throw out of the end zone. Fires it up there incomplete. Intended for Jerrion James, who's had a super night receiving for the Houston Cougars, but he couldn't quite get to this one. Sewell wants to redeem himself a little bit. Who was defending on that from safety? He's the guy that got run over on the kickoff while ago. He decided maybe this was a second chance to get a lick in there. <laughs> there he is, Tim Sewell. Nice job of coverage that time. Minute 41 remaining in the contest. Houston backed up to their goal line, looking now at a third down and 10. And the handoff is to the tailback straight ahead for a couple of yards to give the punter a little running room, uh, a little punting room back there. Sandra, Sanford got it out for a couple of yards. And again, Ramzur made the stop for the Tennessee Vols. So Houston will have to punt. Savedra will be at the very back of the end zone. Tennessee could be in a position to really make a big play right here. They're going to have to do it with nine men. That's all they've got out there right now. <laughs> this time of the ball game, somebody missed the call. <laughs> Eric Parker is waiting. They almost got to him with nine men. Here's Parker catching it in the crowd and dives forward for a couple of yards. Doesn't seem to have much fear of people covering him, does it? <laughs> no, he doesn't. Total yards, Houston 235, Tennessee 577 yards in total. 56 seconds to go, and Bernie Vesey comes back out.
318 oh, yards on rushing and 259 on passing. So that's a uh, pretty good, uh, pretty good variety right there, uh, Tim. Nice mix. Nice mix. Philip Crosby may get Crosby it. lumbering downfield across the 15 down to about the 12 yard line. Philip Crosby, who's 243 pounds. Tell you what, any one of the backups for Tennessee at fullback could start for most anybody else. This uh, second offensive line's doing a great job. Houston seems to be rolling over a little bit, unfortunately, but Tennessee's playing hard right down to the gun. Good punishing running that time by Philip Crosby. Tennessee, of course, will keep it on the ground here with 30 seconds. This may be the last play of the ball game. In fact, BC's going to take a knee. Crowd uh, doesn't <laughs> like that, but that's the gentlemanly thing to do at this stage. With the game well in hand, and Tennessee will let it run out. That's the end of the football game in Knoxville tonight before 106,000. Tennessee comes up big, 42 to 7. And Tim, they got a lot of players into the ball game tonight. Most of all, they got T. Martin, I think, into sync and in a confident situation at, at quarterback. The, the biggest positive, I believe, is T. Martin. He got in a rhythm. He threw to a lot of different receivers. He's 14 for 19, 234 yards, four TDs. You can't play much better than that. Really made one, but only one bad throw all night. This is the kind of game that the coaches wanted T. to have in order to get ready to go to Auburn next week. If there is a negative, it's injuries. Hopefully they're not serious injuries but Tennessee had several players starters leave the ball game but their running game worked well Tennessee dominated the line of scrimmage both sides of the ball another plus was getting Stevens and uh, also uh, Travis Henry the two tailbacks who had seen very little action Jamal will have to have some breathing room down the stretch so getting those guys in they both look good Night, nice ball game for both of those young men and Tennessee's offensive line gave whoever was back there running room to run tonight Got BCN with a few plays, and uh, that's a plus, too, because uh, he'll need to be on standby in case you hope something never happens, but in case. And, and so he looked pretty good, pretty calm in there tonight, especially once, as Tim pointed out, under pressure, he threw one out in the uh, flat very nicely. And you're going to see, there he is. see a second look at that. Nice under control to John Finlayson, who starts going looking for somebody to run into. Looks like an offensive lineman, doesn't he? There you go. How about that dive? <laughs> How about that spin on that dive? Here's uh, Jamal on his long run, breaking a tackle, and then turning on great speed down the sideline for a big back, outrunning the Houston secondary. And Tennessee romps tonight by a score of 42 to 7. For all of us here, we thank you very much for being with us tonight. We'll look forward to seeing you on down the line. From Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, good night, everybody.